how <laughs> it's counting okay. us in it's done okay start talking hi everybody i'm rory and i'm ronnie and welcome to a show we like to call turn down your gain a bit me yeah. <laughs> oh my god that's not the name of our show I that's saw. not the name of our show Hold turn on. down the volume bit a bit oh damn i'm trying because i'm setting the levels while we're already drunk Okay. <laughs> because, 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 my game is down. Better. Does that work better? Um, we'll try. I'm gonna turn mine down a wee bit as well. So it's pretty down. Okay, so we're gonna stop again and mark. Okay, say it again. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Does that work for you? <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Rory. And I'm Ronnie. And welcome to a show we like to call Have and Have Not. <laughs> okay, we can stop that up. Hey everyone, I'm Rory. And I'm Ronnie. And welcome to a show we like to call Have and Have Not. The where, show where we do what, Ronnie? Where uh, one of us reads a book or a book series and the other one tries to re- recount it to the other. And so this episode is going to be a continuation of the previous one where our dear Rory read. That's me. Don't call me Red. <laughs> where Rory read. No, stop. That's an inside joke. Anyway, um, <laughs> I read <laughs> Crown of Midnight. We pre-gamed. We pre-gamed. Yeah, we pre-gamed a little bit. What did Just we drink, Ronnie? We forgot to tell oh, them. What no. did we drink today? Okay, well, That's next. Where you said oh, that's I next. have read. Uh, you can tell. You, I'm always I off I have read schedule. Crown of Midnight. And I have not <laughs> until read Crown today. of Midnight. Yes, until today by Sarah J. Mass. Sarah J. Mass. Mass Moss. It's not Mass. It's not Mass. What, my last name. It's not Liv Mass. It's Liv Moss. Moss. Sarah J. Moss. <laughs> So, yes. um, and all do like covering our bases and asses. We are already drunk. Yep. Yep. What do we? We ha- went to a local bar. I had a shit week, and we already had one cocktail each and a beer. One ipa and each. ipa. <laughs> one ipa. If you watched the previous episode, you know what we're talking about. Yep. And then our our lovely server. What was his name? I don't I know. I have no idea. He, he never introduced an, himself. He had a bit of an accent. He was kind of like a mysterious dark guy that you He didn't have corn. a name tag. But he was kind of nice because he gave us a free shot. <laughs> yeah, he gave us a free shot. He so, gives us free shots every time we go there. And today, Rory, do you want to tell us what we're... Or do you want to ask me what we're drinking? Yeah, it's usually your job. I was going to okay. say. I don't know if we're switching <laughs> off. I think that's your domain. What are we drinking today, Rory? We're drinking a... Wheat to claw. Oh, that sounded so good. <laughs> We're drinking a wheat to claw. A wheat to claw. A white claw. <laughs> white claw. As what flavor are you drinking, Ronnie? I am drinking ruby grapefruit. And what flavor am I drinking, Ronnie? Well, I'm drinking <laughs> natural lime. Natural lime. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. If we end up like stopping for a minute and it sounds like we came back, it's because we had to put ourselves in the timeout corner. <laughs> But as Rory, as our dear Rory already mentioned, what are we discussing today? Okay, so I read for the first time Crown of Midnight, um, which is part of the Throne of Glass series. And last time I actually did the, like, put in the effort and wrote my own synopsis. This time, no. This time I did no such thing. Listen, we drink during this podcast. I really don't think it needs to be high effort. Yeah, come on, guys. (laughs) Uh, You know what's up. I did read the book. That's the most effort I can put in, as I read the freaking book. And I I made notes on it. However. So if you're following along, we're reading Throne of Glass um, from the Sarah J. Moss Throne of Glass book uh, series. The second book. And so if you want you can sit down and listen to the po- i forgot to do the intro spiel oh go ahead do it now um you can grab a drink if you're legal of course we can't track your ids but you know we would hope that you're 21 in the state of united the state of the, the united- state of the united states <laughs> i'm a lightweight the state the country of the united <laughs> states or elsewhere in the european union but we really hope you're enjoying this Get a virgin drink for us if you're not of age. We'll try to trust you, but I don't trust anything these days. So, yeah, we'll have a good time. But anyway. And on to the podcast. Yeah, so boop, I'm going to go through the plot like I normally do. but I'm, And I will yeah. interject yeah, like I normally do. <laughs> yeah, because she's read it already. But I, I'm going to go through the fan wiki written plot because somebody already did this work for me. And if I 
see a plot point that catches my fancy. That's most definitely the way to live by, though. If yeah. someone's already done the work, just just cut just cut out the middle, man. Yeah, I feel like this is the most efficient way to go. They're not going to leave anything out in the fan wiki, so... The only thing I'd be skeptical of is they might reference things that you don't know, so I'd just, I'm just going to look off into the corner and, like, kind of... Give like, me, like, a <laughs> signal. <laughs> like, stare at nothing. It's going to be, like, the big... X, X, We're not X, talking X, about that. X. Yeah, okay. So that's I'm fine. moving along. That's fine. Okay. So according... Let's get started. Let's get started. All right. Okay, Scene. so according to the fan wiki, the plot is... Oh, wait. I'm going to burp. Hold on. I just burped. I just burped. Twins. <laughs> I'm, like, really loud. Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. It's the bubbles. I can't You know what? It. This podcast isn't supposed to be professional. So, yeah. like, you, you signed up for this. <laughs> we do this for fun. You signed up for this. Uh, you voluntarily logged into this. Yeah. This Enjoy. Is, this is on you guys. Uh, so... Selena Sardothian. Selena Sardothian. Yes. Say that again. Say Selena it right. Sardothian. Yes, that's um, her only name. That's her, yes, one of her twelve thousand names. No, that's her only name. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um. Anyway. Spoiler alert for anything. Throne of Glass. Sorry, J. Moss. Yeah. So <laughs> you've read the book. You know where I'm going with that. Yeah. Um. So if you guys remember, if you read the first book or you watched our podcast on the uh, first book. Uh, where we leave off is she wins the competition. She does. She's um, a boss ass bitch. Yeah, she's a boss ass bitch and she wins the competition. And in the first book, she had like a flirtation with Dory and the prince. A flirtation situation. Like they were like a making and making out and stuffs. But she had like also a thing going on with Kale. <laughs> K-A-L-E. <laughs> Kale. <laughs> the <Sorry>. vegetable. <laughs> his name is Kale, but I'm going to call him Kale because that's what his name looks like. Because he's print. got the personality of a leafy green. <laughs> he does. He has the personality of a leafy green for sure. So... Uh, yeah, that was all happening in the first book. She wins the competition. There's some dark magic and shit going on. I'm not going to go over it here. Word keys. Word marks. Word, word magic. That's W-Y-R-D. Not word like wicka wicka word, but like. word is in wired. <laughs> yeah, okay, Will Smith. Anyway, um, <laughs> so what it says on the fan wiki is that Selena Sardothian is fulfilling her new role as the king's champion by performing the assassinations he orders on his enemies. Or so it seems. Ooh, the fan wiki's getting all mysterious. Whoa. So yeah, so in the book, like, she's been tasked to kill these people, but she's not actually doing it. Well, from our perspective, she is doing them until she reveals she isn't. Because one right. of the first chapters, right, isn't it like her going on an assassination attempt? And then mm-hmm. we cut she gives out the of- guy the head. But it's revealed pretty quickly that it's not pretty real. quickly. But the first few chapter, the first chapter or so where she kills or where she goes on a, like an assassination yeah. mission, she, like kills a guy. It's in his sleep alluded or to the fact that she kills him. But then later, like you said, we find out what Rory that it's not real oh my gosh it's staged collusion S- selena sardothian our queen or everything our love is she's yeah. not actually killing the people okay so first point of of roy reading this book that i have to okay. bring up tell me I'm i excited. have mixed feelings about this i've been excited for this for weeks by the way i'm so <laughs> excited to hear your thoughts yeah i have mixed feelings about this tell plot point because thought. on some level like you know, later on in this book, and we'll get to it, she does get up to some pretty gruesome murder. But, like, yeah. I She's felt like it was bitch. a little bit of a cop-out, like, that this cold-hearted bitch is, like, not actually killing people she doesn't know. But I think it's, I think what's really relevant is the fact that she's not killing people for the king, because she fucking hates the king. I mean, that's fair. The people I- that the king sees as enemies are... They're 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 not her allies, but they're people who are his enemies. And it's like two wrongs in this case right. make a right. The enemy of my enemy is my friend is essentially what she's thinking. So uh yeah. No, I understand I that. That's why I said I that's why I have I, I said I have kind of mixed feelings because I understand <laughs> the logic behind making her not kill these people. Mm-hmm. But at the same time it felt like based on the first book that they kind of established that like you know it's no skin off her nose you know what i mean like i feel like on some level it feels a little bit like well who did she kill in the first book that's a good point (laughs) (laughs) that's a flaw in the writing if you ask me because she's supposedly honorless assassin she don't fucking kill anyone but uh, that's a good point i think that's really what my issue was was that she's finally the assassin and she's still not killing anyone 
We've got, Moving on. We've got to the bread and the bones of the argument. Which Clearly is just, neither of us have a point right now. Um, it tells you that she really learned a lot in the salt mines of Antonio. I guess so. Uh, but that was... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just a bloodthirsty bitch. I wanted her you to kill are these bloodthirsty. people. She did kill Kane, like we established. She did. She did But kill that Kane. was after he was like, you are gonna die. And I she mean, said, he tried to kill her today. pretty explicitly, so... so Whose then, phone was that? Um, um, neither of ours. No. No, it was actually Noah Mask. <laughs> That's my brother. Oh, my God. She got he a text. So can... unprofessional. She got a text. With <laughs> her brother, who is also technically my brother at this point because I live with her family, <laughs> said, I can hear the reverterbim, re- verbatim, what, <laughs> he used a weird word, verbatim, verbatim what you two are saying from here. Well, that's his problem, not ours. <laughs> that's his problem. We're in our own separate apartment. Okay. okay. So anyway, well, let's move on. Yeah, I think I'm just a bloodthirsty bitch, personally. I kind of wanted her to, like, have some damage from having you to kill those really people. just really wanted her to kill more people. I did. I think that I tells wanted a her... lot more about you than it does about you know anything. It... <laughs> and, like, this isn't me saying that it should have been a different way. It's just personally, like, I wanted her to, like, kill those people and have damage from you doing that. that. With, like, the hair toss. Like, I want her to, like, I really want her to... That's your own damn fault. Because Selena Sardathian, mind you, has not killed anyone for a, quote, meaningless pers- person or reason mm-hmm. since we met her. Mm-hmm. She has not been an assassin in the sense of mindlessly killing. She's given that aura. She's been giving that vibe. Okay, but she that's actually a fair hasn't point. acted on it in that really. That's a fair point. I think in retrospect now we can really say the fact that she hasn't killed anyone as a bloodthirsty assassin that she's been established as to this point really says that something's a bit off. Okay, that's fair. Because at the when I first opened the book, I was like, really? Like, this is the assassin? Like, it th- yeah, felt like... It's supposed to be that because you learn a lot more about her. In it felt book. like a cop-out initially, but then when she brutally murders people later, I was like, <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> she redeems herself yeah, in she Rory's rede- eyes. <laughs> yes, exactly. I love... I'm a bloodthirsty bitch. I've admitted this. Um, So anyway, um, so it says on the fan wiki, I'm going to continue reading, that she knows most of the king's enemies are the good guys. Okay, so what that means is, from my understanding, is that they're against... The king. Like, there are yeah. people who the king is accusing of, like, conspiring against him. Yeah. Um, because, you know. He's a bad bitch. He's, he's, he's a bad In guy. not a good way. Like, Selena Sardavia is a bad bitch. But he's <laughs> a, a bad, bad bitch. bitch. He's, like, a bad guy. Yeah, he's a horrible person. He's so, the villain. He's, like, the one yeah. who has, like, the devil ears. There's this whole, like, underground rebellion going on. And he's trying to, like, He's trying to stop them. it. And, yeah. and Selena is purposely and intently not <laughs> stopping it, even though that is her paid job. So yeah. she's staging it. Yeah. So it's a whole thing. Um, she's doing a pretty damn good, good job at staging it, though, mind you. She's like putting blood everywhere. Yeah, she does a pretty good job. I mean, she has like fake bodies and st- like she's good at faking her. She, well, she takes she has hobos. real bodies. <laughs> she uses real bodies that she hasn't killed. Yeah, she has. She finds basically yeah hobos. It's like random people or people who have already died. Yes, yeah, so she's like yeah, this is them. They're dead. Whatever. I mean, she goes them. to like the, the the mortuary like with the dead yeah, people. She she's like, like names the shit hi. Out of them. Can I buy a body? And they're like, sure. This doesn't seem weird. <laughs> This raises no red flags at all. You're the king's assassin? No! Seems totally legit. Not weird. Yeah, seems so legit. Anyway. Totally. So, (laughs) the next person of significance. So, after, like, a few people who we don't care about that she, like, helps sneak out of Ardalan, the country. And quote murder. Yeah, and quote, yeah, like, fake murders. The the king thinks that all these people are murdered, by the way. But she basically makes them change their name and, like, they sneak out of Ardalan. She's like, she gives them a pep talk. She's like, you need to change. That's like an intervention. She's like, you need to change your ways. (laughs) Biatch. <laughs> Get out. So so anyway, Get the, out. the next person the king gives her is a guy, a young man, a young man. Attractive man. Yes, a very attractive man named Archer Finn. Oh, yeah. And that's like her next target, and she has a month to, to kill him, basically. Yeah. Um, Which so, is pretty nice of the king to say you have a month. So Archer is supposedly, and we find out later, that I'm going to just say this now for the sake of time. We find out later he is, in fact, a part of a rebel movement. But his accusation is that he's a part of the rebel. Is that he's a part of a rebel the movement, king which is not confirmed, <laughs> which is not confirmed until later. 
But that's his accusation, and it turns out, yes, to be in fact true. So, yeah. Well, it seems like the king already has his own underground system, and he's not intending to use his underground system to take out these people of interest, and rather mm -hmm. he'd use the bloodthirsty assassin, which poses the question of how secret does he really want these murders to be? Yeah. so Because he's not using his underground people to get the, that have gotten the intel to kill them correctly, right. but he's, yeah. It's like, he's a sleazy ass man. That's yeah, it. That's, all, that's the, the only point I make. The Continue. king of Waterland sucks. He sucks a duck. But his son is a stud. He um, sucks. No, the, Dorian doesn't suck anything. I wish he would suck. <laughs> that sounded weird. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Me. Oh my god. Okay, anyway. I love Continue. Dorian. I'm sorry, I love Dorian. I'm um, gonna need to be put in a timeout in a second. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> you know, we've literally haven't even gotten past the, past the first like paragraph. I'm so sorry. Um so Cut anyway. Up anytime. So apparently according to like sources, Archer Finn, who's her next target, is a part of this rebel movement that's trying to track down the lost princess. <gasps> Aelin Galathinius. You are the pronouncing heir. that way, by the way. What? You are correctly pronouncing that by okay, the way. Okay, cool. That's what she pronounced in the audiobook, so I was gonna I'm rolling with Aelin it. Galathinius. Aelin Galathinius. Her Ooh. name is technically Aelin Ash River Galathinius, but okay, we learned that later. <laughs> <laughs> I've read the book. <laughs> And I have. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, cool. that's oh. a callback to the first little bit. Ah, he I said hope it. He said it. All right. Anyway, so <laughs> so Aelin Galathinius is the lost princess of Terrasin, which is like this other kingdom. It's a northern territory. So there's multiple kingdoms. She's working for the king of Otterland. Is this one kingdom? A D. Yes. Odd. Not Odd or land. When I first read it, or for, when I first listened to the other audiobook i thought it was like otterland like the ottoman Empire. <laughs> like the ottoman Empire. O T T. <laughs> i was like ott no it's ad yeah it's ad i didn't realize that until i just read the fan wiki <laughs> so anyway otterland okay so it says in the fan wiki that meanwhile selena's relationship with kale <laughs> i'm gonna call him kale Not i'm sorry bitch. kale 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 westfall continues to blossom their blossom. friendship what and attraction ridiculous is growing name. uh like a blossom like, like it's growing like a blossom yes bitch yeah <laughs> this is ridiculous <laughs> fucking kale um so chal feels that his loyalty is to the king and to dorian Havilliard, who bt dubs is the prince who doesn't suck and no dorian is my king i, I love dorian i'm sorry dorian is my king i know like okay so i haven't got we'll talk about this later i'll get to the are I'll, you sure <laughs> i'll get to the love triangle later rest assured my okay. opinions are coming okay just so everybody knows but like it, it's coming okay there's a love triangle between kale 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 k-a-l-e <laughs> Kaol, the leafy green dorian the prince so Kaol's the captain of the guard dorian's the prince and selena's the assassin yes we know so there's that. like a love triangle between them for those of you who missed the first episode and, and if you missed the first episode why are you listening to the yeah really the second book? i mean i Come feel on, like you obligated. made some pretty dis like decision you made decisions <laughs> yeah in your life. i feel obligated to to re to like read you know, i appreciate the the need to like, refresh but i feel like those who dudes, are like completely like in like no man's land need to get out of no man's yeah, that's land because your you're about to die like yeah it's gonna get real confusing soon so yeah, very um anyway and just so you know it gets even more confusing after <laughs> this book <laughs> what happens is that selena surprises <laughs> <Kale> <laughs> with this quote on the fan wiki romantic birthday dinner you hate this which i think is so funny that he like selena sardothian the cooks, vicious bloodthirsty yeah, assassin cooks a birthday dinner <laughs> that scene was so funny and he was like you did this for me she's like yeah and I, she's like, I fried up some <laughs> shit in a pan. She's like, yeah, I did. I cooked for you because I'm the real breadwinner here. Yeah. I'm the one I who murders the king's all. I can commit murders and cook a nice stew. I'm good at this shit. And mind you, this whole time, Kale, <laughs> if, if I'm recalling correctly, refresh my We're memory. We're going to call him Kale from yeah, now on. Yeah. I know it's Kale, but we call They're him They're interchangeable Kale. at this point because this man is the epitome of a leafy green. Well, yeah. the leafy green, he's yeah. like supporting Selena's decision to, king, to yeah, kill like, the king's Seems men. good for you on the outside, but is disgusting in your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> 
in on the inside. Um, Kale is supportive of Selena's need to kill the king's enemies. And Dorian corners her and he's like, why are you doing this? I know you're better than this. And she's like, it's who I am. Do you remember that scene? Yes, I do. That was interesting. (laughs) But like the love triangle is complicated by the fact that Kale is like, yeah, she can fucking like decapitate this man. And Dorian's like, no, don't kill him. He might have had something to live for. Anyway. But yeah, this like is part of the additional love triangle and Kale is completely supportive of cold blooded murder, mind you. So that's how she has a lot of his character. He's like that tough captain of the guard. <laughs> the Ugh. captain of the guard. If you couldn't tell, I really hate this relationship. Anyway, she really hates Kale. I'm sorry, I okay. And whenever we go out to a restaurant, she's like, just don't give me <laughs> Just don't give me kale. I'll take anything. I'll take alfalfa. <laughs> I take leafy greens. I take mixed sassafras. greens. Romaine. <laughs> no kale. No kale. <laughs> like, okay. So, so I'm anyway, sorry. she makes him this <laughs> stupid ass dinner, which you know, whatever. And it's quote romantic. It's supposed to be it's romantic. Quote it romantic. comes off kind of silly, and. So, they because he's so touched that she made him dinner and she's the only loser who showed up to his birthday party. <laughs> she's like, I invited myself and a few others. But and I made else showed you dinner. Up. And yeah. he's like, It's just you. Yeah, but like I'm the only one who showed up. So hey. But um yeah, so they have sex. Because <laughs> um Yeah. They have sex. I don't think they have yeah, sex. Yeah, they do. It says it in the fan wiki, babe. I don't think they have sex. Yes, they do. I don't think okay. they did. Bitch, it explicitly says that she, it hurt at first, but then he eased into it. They <laughs> had sex. <laughs> I think I misremembered. They had sexual intercourse. You didn't need to tell me that part. That's what you didn't believe me. That's what happened. They have sex. I thought she didn't. Was I, this her first time? Then? I promise you they do. Yeah. Okay, this was her first time. <laughs> yeah, it says it's pretty it's pretty clear that they have sex. And the thing says they solidify their relationship that night, which is code for consummate, which is code for fucking. So Anyway, so it says they're very happy for a short amount of time. Okay. They're happy. Great for them. I don't care. Okay. Oh, BT dubs. Because the fan wiki is kind of like vague. So I will say this. Like, Selena does at one point in the book, before she gets to this whole bullshit with Kayal, she goes out with Archer. Mm hmm. And she's like. Yeah, this is kind of an important thing. And I was wondering why you skipped it. It's the fan wiki. It's not me. So I remember this part. She goes out with Archer. And she knows Archer because he was also an apprentice to the dude. Aelin? What? No, no, that's her. Adian. Not her. The Adian. princess. Adian. Ad- what? Who's the guy who trained her? Adian. Adian. That guy. So, he, Ar- Archer was also an apprentice, correct? Like, she no. knew him from the past. No. Or, like, she ran into him in the past. N- yeah, because he called her... Oh, it, it's not Adian. Oh, my gosh. Who I'm, are we talking about? I'm drunk. <laughs> Whatever. It's not Adian. Adian's introduced later. Fuck. What's his name? He's an asshole, so I sort of like blocked him off. No, Archer Finn is he's a con- he's a male concubine. Yeah, he's a male concubine, but she but he knows him. He started as an apprentice for to the, the man assassin who, guy, the king of assassins, who trained Selena. Yes, I'm pulling up his name now because Arabin. Arabin. Arabin Hamel, that guy. Correct. Like, I knew it. I knew it started with an A. I'm so sorry, guys. Everybody's I... name starts with an A, and like a couple countries start with an A in this book, so it's a little <laughs> confusing. But anyway. But no, no. He, okay, so Arabin Hamel is, like you said, the king of the assassins, right? Right. And he is associated. We don't know how close yet. Well, rather, you don't know how close yet. Mm-hmm. He is with a system of consorts and not consorts in like the queen consort but like a consort is like i take you to bed now yes. like, ho, 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 like ho. concubines yes so like 
escorts. Yep. So he's tied in with the system of escorts. And Selena was indebted to Arabin Hamill. Yes. And then, therefore, part of his assassin's guilt. Yes. She was one of his few, which is a, uh, which is further explained in The Assassin's Blade, which yeah. is the prequel novella, which I recommend you read after the third book. Mm-hmm. I recommend anyone reads it after the third but book. But that's how she knows Archer, is that she knew Archer from the past. So when she sees his name... Like she's like, oh shit! I know like, this man. He was an I know apprentice. This guy. She was like, he was an apprentice when I was still there. So he's now a full right slut. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I'm sorry. He's really made his bones. He's he's really jived the bones of yeah, many now. Jeez, he's really getting it. So yeah, she goes out with Archer, and she's basically like, dude, um, I'm supposed to like kill you, and Archer's like. What? She levels with him because he's someone from her past that yeah. she trusts. So and she's now trying the king to give is him, trying to get. Well, she's trying to do two things. One, she doesn't want to kill him because she doesn't want to kill anyone that the king told her to kill, which she has not done so far anyway. So she's trying. She also suspects that Archer does have some involvement with this like underground group and she's trying to like get information yeah. out of him. So she's basically like low key blackmailing him. She's to, also like, like a little bit of a snitch. Yeah. She likes to know she's like she wants to be a fly on the wall. She wants to know what's happening. She's like, so what do you know? And like he's he, like, Oh no nothing, man. So he's he gives her like information she agrees with him that he gives her information in exchange for like it's very loose helping information him. though. It does end up being, like, not very helpful information, but that's the original agreement. Because, honestly, if, if someone was like, I'm going to kill you, tell me something, I'd be like, the sky is blue. They'd be like, <laughs> yes! congratulations, you passed. You get to live another day. Oh, wait, I have to go to the bathroom. Can you pause it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is what happens when we pregame. I'm so sorry, guys. We'll be back in, like, half we'll a We'll be second. right back. Right now okay we're back so uh also important information so this is going on with archer and also like nahemia at one point tells nahemia yes nahemia the princess um of a different kingdom Eelway. Eelway. she says to her and selena get into like a spat because nahemia wants to like basically rebel against the king and it's kind of been rumored that nahemia has been you know, cavorting with, like, these mm-hmm. underground rebel forces. Well, because Ilway has been involved in a bunch of, like, oppressive actions. So, like, there are rebels in Ilway, mm-hmm. and there have been rumors that the princess is sympathetic. So it's right. kind of like a, yeah. yeah. But she basically says, like, join me. And <laughs> Selena's oh, like, God. Selena's like, why would I do that? <laughs> and Nehemia's like, you're a coward bitch and she's like i'll lose my job and selena's like that may be so <laughs> no However, but the fact no, that she calls not. her coward like, yeah, that's really what gets her. sticks with her no she gets very upset about that because selena's like i ain't no coward did you just burp <laughs> yeah. man she burped to the side she was really trying to hide that burp <laughs> that you funny. called me out there. That's you look like so um mean. that dude from chocolate rain like moving away from the mic chocolate <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, that's an old reference. <laughs> um, that's a very old reference. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I loved him. I loved Tay. I wish he would post more stuff. Um, uh, so anyway. So yeah, that happened. That's the whole thing. So she and Nahimi get into like this spat. And mind you, Nahimi has been like her closest friend. Up her until only friend? Yeah. Besides, besides her Dorian. love interest? Well, yeah. Dorian's but there was also like kind of this weird friend. kind of like love interest thing with Dorian. Like, will they, won't they? Yeah. I mean, like, I will say, and this comes back later, like. I get that Nahima is like her only friend and then there's her love interest, but I felt like Dorian was more of a friend to her. He was always supposed to be a friend. I, I, I do not. Okay. Whoever would like ship Selena and Dorian longer than the first book, I feel like they were seriously misguided because I feel like there's a strong difference between a good guy friend for a female protagonist mm-hmm. and a male love interest. Oh, we'll, well, so we'll get to... But I think I that, agree with you. However, I really think that Dorian was like the best guy friend that she could have had. I like Dorian a lot. I, I love Dorian. But I I'll wish tell Dorian you, would. It's funny you say that because I was going to talk about later and I, I still will. Like who I ship with her more at this point. In I time. don't ship either of them with her. Well, I agree. However, <laughs> based on my, the information I have so far, okay. I will explain myself because I have not. I shipped I her with Nehemia. I always shipped her with Nehemia. I said that from the first <laughs> book, but then that gets fucking shattered soon. So hold on. We're getting to that. Um, so, yeah, that's all like the kind of important like stuff that happens before. Like, What about Mort? Oh, fucking Mort. Okay. <laughs> 
Unpopular opinion, probably. I hate Mort. I think he's so stupid. I think Mort is cute. He bought, he provides a bit of comic relief when Selena wants to punch the daylights out of something. He's a talking doorknob. <laughs> that was okay. I will admit that was my issue bringing up it in the previous book because I really thought he was introduced in the previous book. No. Oh my God. Oh God. So a throwback. This bitch made me look like a fucking moron in the last podcast because she was like, what about more the talking doorknob? And I was like, yeah. Like I, had, I totally did not know what she was talking about. I forgot Mort I was, was introduced right. in the second book. He's I really not did. in the first one. He I really not did. In the first one. But then when she said like, I finally got to where we meet Mort. I was like, oh yeah, he had watched it the whole time. Like Selena was a fucking fool. So you all got to watch me look like a fucking moron in the first <laughs> podcast in real time. So anyway. IRT in real time. Yeah. So anyway, you know, there's like these Mort, creepy rooms yeah, below them. the castle or whatever. The through catacombs yeah the catacombs is like the secret entrance through her room all that jazz where she fought the evil creature that fucking kane summoned Which is in very the first convenient book. and so there's a, a door with a talking fucking doorknob mort. named mort mort, mort. 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 okay um <laughs> and... i love mort okay when i get to him i'd be like yes okay so in all fairness to me though like i would listen to the audiobook and i don't know what the fuck was going on with this woman reading the audiobook. <laughs> he told me she's like a Nor- New York Mort accent. Mort talks with like a New York accent. And Rory is from New York. I'm from Delaware. The slower, not the slower lower, the, the, <laughs> the nice north. But she's from New York. And how did Mort sound? He's like, I'm Mort. I talk like this. You know, I'm Mort, the talking doorknob. And, and Mort, I was like, the talking doorknob. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was so confused. I was like, um, I don't I think like- Long Island is a part of, like, the kingdom of Otterland, so... I feel like his accent, though, was, was, was something maybe that inanimate objects, a.k.a. doorknobs, might... Sp- with- or- <laughs> he was irritating the shit out of me because he was so fucking annoying and useless. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people probably like Mort. He, Mort he, provides he valuable felt, insight later. But though. he felt so annoying. To he me. was kind of gatekeeping it or door hopping <laughs> it. <laughs> no pun intended. Gatekeeping. <laughs> he was door keeping it. It just felt like he knew things when he it was did. convenient. It was kind of it was it was like, like a, he Deus ex machina, like he was a when reluctant it was villain. Like he didn't mean to be a villain, but he was I just felt like it was like a cop out, like that there was no other way for her to give selena this information so we're just gonna let the talking doorknob tell her when it's convenient for him and then the ghost oh yeah and the ghost the ghost fucking shows up a couple times (laughs) ghost again every time that ghost showed up i was like take five years off my life you literally i was like i don't know what's going on like the the old queen elena is talking to Selena. I, I made this point to my friend too. I was like, "Come on, they kind of got a better name." I expressed my annoyance with this in the last podcast. Um, and the king, the dead king, is Gavin, and like, so this woman comes up whenever it's like needed for the plot. So whatever. No, it. I think. Mm, um, she is very very relevant. In the second book, it doesn't feel that. But she is very relevant. I believe you. I'm telling you, in the second book, it doesn't feel that way. For me, when I read the second book, I definitely felt like she was like this figure who was... She was more relevant in the first book, honestly. I felt... But even in the second book, I felt like she was kind of... She was... I don't know how to describe it, really. It's like she was just keeping key information away, which is what you discover later, which is... It's not spoiling because you can get get the vibes, you know? I mean, my biggest problem with her so far is that she hasn't helped Selena at all. Exactly. I was like, every time she came on screen, I forgot. You see she's struggling. You're telling... Literally, she's telling her, if I recall correctly, she's telling her, like, you're fighting the fight. You're fighting the battle. Your battle is going. You will succeed. And she's like, like, yeah. you fucking say something useful? And she's... And Selena's just standing there like, okay. uh, What battle... (laughs) Um, what am I doing? Selena's right like, now? I just want to keep my job. So he was like, um, I'm just pretending to kill bitches. Thanks. 
Like, it's it's so weird. Okay. And, and Elena's like, you're doing great. BT sweaty. Dubs, I want you all to know, I keep roasting the series because it's funny, but I actually really enjoyed this book, and I will explain this a little bit later, what my gripes with it really are. Continue then. Um, I, uh, anyway. So, <laughs> so, after her and Kale... After Selena and Kale have sex, that's all like the little background stuff that happens before this. I literally completely forgot they had sex. They do. They have sex. That was so sad. I had to Google it to make sure you were right. Yeah. I, and I, I felt really sad. I would never forget <laughs> that disgusting moment that where they have sex. She lost her virginity <laughs> to that. To a vegetable. Yeah. To that fucking chump. To a brain dead piece of shit. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway. <laughs> I'm telling you, I catch ships, man. I'm a fucking hawk with ships. I didn't like Tamlin. I don't like this motherfucker. <laughs> like the fact that you use hawk is kind of funny. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. But anyway, you will next book. Oh, hopefully I will. Yeah, maybe. So anyway, I feel like just somebody needs to be better for her. Anyway, um, because I love Selena and I think she deserves better. So apparently, Sarah J. Moss doesn't though she's wrong um <laughs> so so to so whatever so they have sex after this fucking birthday party <laughs> are we still <laughs> segueing from the birthday party yeah so anyway oh my god so then you know slade has been doing this thing with like archer for a while like oh, talking to him side note because i don't know if this like shows up in the fan wiki oh yeah it does okay hold on never so, mind we'll get to it we'll get to it let's just go we'll with the fan wiki and see we'll what happens get to it. Let's just go with the fan wiki and see what happens instead of questioning it. So That sounds so cool. Blah, 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 so blah, blah. Kale is kidnapped. Oh, no. He is kidnapped. Oh, no. He, and he, he is Not her lover. Dadnapped. And he... Yeah. <laughs> Not her lover. Yep. Not her sex machine. So she's, like, pissed. She's like, not my hot piece of ass. So it's a whole thing. They, these dudes kidnap him. And they give they bring him to like a warehouse or something like yes, that. Yes, like, you are correct. In like a, on the fucking docks or something. It's like very remote. And they basically tell Selena like, "Come alone or give us your fucking money." Yeah, it's like it's like basically come here and rescue your boyfriend or you know and, and come alone. Otherwise, we'll cut him to pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ransom, you know how it goes. <laughs> the ransom. Yeah, you, you know, know how, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so she, she's like, she arrives at this thing and she kills a bunch of people. And this was actually a really badass scene. I'm not going to lie. I was like, like when I was listening to it in the car, I was like driving to work and I was like listening to it in the car. She was driving with a vengeance when she went. Yeah. And it was like, she burst through and I was like, she burst. I was like the cat and puss in boots. I was like, Ooh. like I was waiting and she did not disappoint and she I killed some S- bitches and it was great. Let me just say, I loved Selene in this scene because when it comes to putting down my she cup sl- for that, I slammed a witch claw for that. <laughs> the white claw. The white claw. But we, like I said, have been told for an entire book and a half of, around at this point. Or right. a book and a quarter. What a badass she is. What a badass mother effer she is. And, and we how haven't she's really able seen to it. Kill, and we haven't seen it. And then we literally see her pull out all the stuff. And then she's like, hold on. I got another one for you. Yep. And it's, it, it's kind of insane because we finally see the killing machine that all the king's men or king's not King's men, but they, well, yeah, the King's men have been finding, but she hasn't been acting on. Right. It, it was a really was cool. badass scene. I remember reading it and it being one of the most vivid scenes that I recall to this day while I'm a knee burrito, which <laughs> says something. <laughs> and like, I, I loved it because it was definitely like, okay, here's the Selena Sardothian we've been told about, but haven't been right. shown. Right. So now it's more the show, not tell because, well, yeah. I, I thought that was brilliant too because you know, it really showcases like what Selena's capable of, but the fact that we haven't gotten it for this long, you know, and I know I said I was a bloodthirsty bitch at the beginning, but like I do think generally from a storytelling perspective, I I did understand that choice a little bit more when I got to this point because I was like, it really emphasizes that she is hesitant to be this thing. Yeah. yeah. That she sees that as like her inner monster almost. And as soon as you read The Assassin's Blade, I feel like you'll have more profound observations regarding this because when she finally does 
decide like at least from reading crown of midnight the second book in the like chronological series like the Mm -hmm. main series you see that the time she finally decides to act on what she's known for and release that kind of like chaotic evil side of her she's doing it because someone that she cares about is in direct and imminent danger right well you know what i thought was interesting and we'll get to this more at the end when it all makes sense but like i always got this feeling reading the books that you know this was a part of selena that she wanted to suppress and initially i was confused by that i was like why isn't this like your whole job she feels then at the end when yeah. you find out like we'll get to this but when you find out something at the end you're like holy shit this all makes sense why she's so reticent to like be this assassin because that's not who she really was supposed to be or genuinely wants to be you know it it, it becomes glaringly apparent that this is something that she was created to become and instead of like but this was late but too late it was it was something that she like you haven't read the prequel book. It's a survival mechanism. And that's what, yeah. It's, you know, it's, something it's not that who she, she really is. It's she what she reluct- needed to become. She reluctantly became it. And I feel like something that you reluctantly become for necessity is a lot harder to shake because in your heart of hearts, you think that you need to do it rather than right. I am myself. I need to do it. And this is getting into a whole lot of like, like shielding, masking, whatever you want to call it in this day and age. But mm-hmm. like, it's a lot of, a lot of Selena's personality can like, kind of dissect and say okay well this is this was a very violent thought she had but was also semi-reluctant like. yeah but it's interesting you know it was a really cool scene i gotta say even though it come, you know like all that anger comes out for a fucking chump like kale um <laughs> but anyway so yeah so okay. she kills all these people and then she, she finds becomes out. a badass machine she's a badass yeah, bitch it's anyone who questions that will perish i can't wait to see like when they make this into a show like how that plays out it was picked up by before by my Hulu. eyes, right? Like I heard, so I'm like I'm excited because. Ooh, excuse me, another burp. Um, God, that's so... I'm gonna be burping a lot. I'm sorry. Like, that's as so mean of you. Not to downplay Sarah J. Mass is right. I'm gonna Moss. say Mass. I'm sorry. Uh, Mass is writing like it's. I'm gonna say SJM. How about that? So not to downplay SJM's writing because it was good. Like I could see it in my mind what she was doing. That was it was cool. It's just I can't wait to see someone like interpret Actually, that yeah. and see it physically because it was a cool scene. And as someone who's read more than you have, mm-hmm. I really hope they interpret it in the way that makes it not a what was the term that we remembered earlier? It was a redcon. Redcon. Mm-hmm. I, it doesn't redcon the previous sentiments. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really hope that whoever ch- is selected to portray Selena takes in the entire character all of the the pre post mid during whatever developments and does like a really full character embodiment because that's what's necessary for this character right and as we'll get to by the end of this book but like between i i liked this book i it, th- this is one of my favorite books my favorite book is queen of shadows uh-huh which is the fourth book i see i told you i didn't like this book as much as the first one but i liked it I, I, this was my second favorite because I Maybe. thought it really shows the dichotomy. That I think we, I'm just missing something. Cause no, I, haven't I don't think far you're, enough. I don't think you're missing anything. I just really don't think the, the extent of what we know and what we interpret to be true has yet to be revealed as you have. That's fair. As That's you can fair. tell from the cliffhanger, it leads off on, yeah, you know, yeah, I can tell. So, you know, obviously maybe I'll feel differently about it when I get further in the book, but this book didn't capture me as much as the first one. I got to say, so, but we're, we'll get into that. Yeah. This part legitimately fucked me up. Which part? So we're getting <laughs> to this. So she finds out that Archer is the one behind the kidnapping. Yeah. So he's which is the kind one of fucked who, up. Who orchestrated the kidnapping, the kidnapping of and Kale, threatening ransom and it and seems abrupt. Him. But if you read the book, her and Archer, you know, because they know each other, they kind of started building a friendship. So it does feel like a legit betrayal that he, like, after she's been it helping, it is him, a legit betrayal that he, like, full on did this because they thought. Like, it says in the thing, it says, Archer says they kidnapped Kaol because they thought he was set to question Nehemia about her involvement in the rebel movement. He says he has been working with Nehemia to assemble a rebel force to challenge the king. That's true. Mm-hmm. Archer says they now realize that it's the king who will question Nehemia very soon, and he thinks they will torture and maybe even kill her. So Kaol knew this might happen and could have prevented it. And Selena believes this, even though it's only partially true. Well, that's what the wiki says. Fuck Kale. 
He did know this was going to happen. He had more he than was reason. Told. He had more than reasonable suspicion. Yeah, he was told that and there was this pro- thing going on with Nehemia. That like there was a threat against Nehemia's life, and he did jack shit to do anything about it. He didn't tell Selena about it. He didn't tell anyone about it. He didn't even tell Nehemia about it. When it Fuck comes to that guy, when it comes to people that you care about, like I tell you everything. Like when when it comes to t- people that you care about, Rory and I are best friends. I tell her everything so of course i would tell her something that may pertain to her if my lover <laughs> <laughs> couldn't even say that was sorry no 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 no. another inside joke i'm sorry <laughs> if my lover her best friend was directly implicated in a plot to overthrow or uh, i can't think of the word like threaten the holdings Harm, of the whatever. king whatever like, I would tell my fucking lover because I feel like as someone that you care about, you need to tell them everything. And there's like a level of like expectation when you're dating someone right. or even like having a one off with. And her. it's like, bullshit that she made him a birthday dinner. <laughs> I mean, and it's bullshit that he felt the need to keep it from her because two things. Number one, I get he's the captain of the guard and like his loyalties to the king and he's in kind of a tough spot and all that shit. But at the same time, it's like telling Selena doesn't harm him. No, if like, anything, it helps the king because it like he's acting. Like, he looks bad after he can, Nehemia dies. Listen, he can frame it as a, I am a member of the king's service and I'm telling the king's assassin that there could potentially be someone within the walls of the castle who are potentially betraying the honor of the king. He right. could have flipped it whatever way. If it got back to the king that he had There's told so Selena, many he, he could have said so much. So, like, but instead he said nothing. And then what happened? Oh. <laughs> had a mouthful of white cloth. It's a cloth. So Selena frees chaos. And rushes back to the castle, as it says on the fantasy, to and save Nehemia. And Nehemia is brutally massacred. Oh my al- fucking god, she along fucking did. Along with her guards in her room. In her room. That legit shocked me. I like, like nothing my, in this series. Listen, I'm getting goose pimples right now from recounting it. I was shooketh. I was I, so mad. I actually kind of low key shipped selena and nehemia and holy fuck balls i literally didn't realize that i was like oh my god that was okay so they're rarely does sarah j Ma- well that's not true so sarah j mass does this weird thing where she i've read a couple things by her where she weirdly like both consistently doesn't surprise me like i can pick i'm like i know where she's going with this and i'm usually right like and tampon the, yeah like fucking tampon <laughs> and then all of a sudden she'll shake me to my core i'm like like i was gagged i was so mad when i read that because i was like they my only thought at that point was oh my gosh kale was needlessly put in danger so that nehemia nehemia was brutally i'm sorry listen (laughs) it is 11 41 p.m est and i've been up since way too early but nehemia was brutally murdered as a fucking it was a decoy like they weren't gonna hurt kale they just wanted her they just wanted her to show up and talk to her or whatever and nehemia was brutally murdered so it was it was absolutely ridiculous i fucking hated it i read it i was so mad you can ask me a question i just don't know how nicely i'll respond okay so let me just ask you a question because i'm a little bit confused can get tell me confused 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 confucius i'm a little bit confused why <laughs> did they kill Nehemia? I was a little bit confused about this whole thing. It about- was revealed at the end of the book. I don't remember. We'll get to that. You can explain it later. So yeah. anyway, I was a little bit confused even at this point why Nehemia was dead. I was like, it's kind of a roundabout what? reason. It's really, it's really ridiculous. But it felt really out of nowhere. I was it, like, it was um, kind of out of nowhere. Okay. I mean, I was shocked, but I was a little confused. Yeah. So anyway. Um, Selena blames Kaol for Nehemia's death because he knew that there was a threat on her life and he didn't do anything he to didn't, stop it. He which, didn't even... She's right. Fuck him. It's, okay. He... Whatever. He... Okay. <coughs> Relinquish the, the, the requirement, the obligation of him to stop it. Yeah. At least put the obligation on him to tell the person that he's fucking... 
Yeah, exactly. And he supposedly cares about, like, he says he cares about Selena, and yet he doesn't say that, like, there's a potential he's plot. Like thinking about marrying her, which was disgusting. He's thinking about marrying her and refuses to tell her that her best friend, who in the meantime has been, like, giving her lessons on language and culture and fucking word keys and word marks. Yeah. And, like, he doesn't tell her. Yeah, that's fucked. Like, I get that it's not directly his fault but if i was selena i understand why she's mad like that's some bullshit i like for real if like my boyfriend knew someone was gonna mug you and a didn't boyfriend fucking str- tell me boyfriend's a strong word in this case but if someone who says they care about you yeah, because like, they have never established each other as like a significant partner right. but they said that they cared about each other yeah I don't know. I feel like Kale, the fucking but for shorthand, green. Shorthand, if yes. my boyfriend knew someone was going to mug you and didn't fucking tell me and then you got mugged, I would have beat I you been, up. I would have been so pissed. I would have beat you up, Rory. <laughs> I would have so said, mad. your boyfriend didn't trust you enough to tell you that I was going right. to get mugged. Fuck you. Be a better girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, like what? Stop. I would so, not have said that. I'm sorry. So anyway. <laughs> I would have been so mad at that fucking to, asshole. She tries to like attack Kale. Oh my God. Shut the fuck up. Please. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> we're going to move on. So she tries to attack Kale. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So before this. I forgot to mention this. Dorian no. has magic. He has. What? Dorian has magic. What? Magic. Oh. Ah! So Dorian has a magic. magic. So the you prince say. has magic, which is a big deal because the king has outlawed magic people He's gone to quite and has killed some a lot of them. Extreme extent. It's to like outlaw magic. Yeah, like no magic. It's a whole thing. He even uh, executes this one singer who was singing. It was a sm- small scene. There's a singer it was who a was found scene who was singing. That was a really cool scene. But like who was singing about like magic or whatever. Well, she was using some old folk tales the from old, like like was outlawed, it from Terrison. It was something like that. It was like outlawed fairy folk songs kind of thing. Yeah, and she was singing about magic and he like puts her to death and the whole time before she dies she's telling she's announcing to the court everyone he's she knows who he's killed because of their magic and i was like sick because it's something they were literally born with is this a, a yeah. metaphor for gayness it's a, it's a gay it's so slash racism metaphor waking. and i'm like okay cool so um a little weird that there's literal fairies but it's fine so f-a-e r-i-e-s <laughs> f-a-e so yeah so anyway dorian finds out that he has magic um and that's a big problem because of his what kind of magic out. does he have tell me he has like just magic magic I don't um know. no they don't specify in this book. yeah they do what, what kind of magic does he exhibit fairy magic i don't know i don't know that the magic what 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 element does he affect he like put, moves things like he makes all the books ice. come off the shelf and like ice ice that's not a baby book, bitch i promise you yes it is <laughs> it's fucking not <laughs> i won't let you do this to me again he gets books <laughs> off the shelf it's a whole thing they he don't makes specify the room yet cold. no they don't get to that yet that's not here yet <laughs> <laughs> that is not here yet we are not there yet. This is not Mort. <laughs> Fuck. We are not there yet. So anyway. It's not a surprise anyway. <laughs> this is like a, a backstory. Hell. Thank you for spoilers. Anyway, not that I care. But I'm like, so sorry. Not that I give a fuck, but like anyway, so. You do not give a fuck. I really don't. But anyway, so yeah, he's got magic. So they really important. don't specify. I forgot to. No, they don't. He just makes the books fly off the shelf. And then he like. He does more than that later. It's, it's, it's not specified in this book. I promise you. <laughs> Mm. there's no like indication that he only affects cold that's not a thing no, he, he doesn't things. only affect cold or whatever he moves things there's no cold thing i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> i read the book so like i read the book too <laughs> you're mixing books that's why you. so anyway so i'm gonna just so anyway. be quiet in my corner so when she tries to attack Kaol, like, Dorian stops her with like his magic powers which kind of reveals to everyone that like he has these latent magical define powers define everyone People in the room, like Selena, Dorian, Kay- Dorian and Kaol. Are okay, in the room. good. So and only dead Nehemia. So, <laughs> so yeah. So Kaol, it says in the wiki, sends Selena to the castle dungeons because she's out of control. Because um, didn't what did she do to him? She tried to kill him, but specifically she tried. She raised her hand and she tried to stab him. She also scratched his face. Oh yes, she did do That's that. That's a very. It's important because 
every time after this that she sees Kale, she references that that he has a scratch. He has face. scratch scars on his face. Yeah, from it's when very she like him. Um, Carmine Falcone, like Batman. I don't know Catwoman. what you're talking about, but so, I believe you. For those of you who like Batman, like I do, Catwoman I don't. scratches Carmine Falcone's face in the comics, and then he has a scar. Anyway, um, <laughs> nerd. I love Batman. Anyway, anyway, so anyway, um. <laughs> I'm a fucking mess. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, yeah. She goes to the dungeon, and who does she see in the dungeon? That bitch, Caltaine, the heroin addict chick who was engaged to the Heroin dude. addict? Not heroin. What is she addicted to? It's like morphine or something. She's got an addiction, right? She's addicted to something. She has, like, a, a drug addiction. <laughs> what? Yeah! <laughs> you spit in my face. She has a drug addiction. What? It's like... I swear to God, she has a drug addiction. It's like something. I don't know what it is. It's like painkillers or whatever. And she's like, you know, suffering withdrawal in the dungeon. So Caltaine, who was the bitch in the first book, who was like colluding with the Duke, is also in the dungeon. And she's like... <laughs> um, and that happens. So she sees Caltaine down there, who's going to be released soon because she's engaged to the Duke and the Duke wants her back. And like neither Selena nor Caltaine have any explanation as to why this is. But Caltaine's like, whatever, I'm going to get my morphine soon. So, <laughs> you know, I'm right, aren't I? No. Yes, I am. I don't think she has an addiction. She does. She's addicted. That's explicitly said. Everybody in the comments, please. I... Please tell me, like, explain. I am so right. This is, like, there's a, she literally has a drug problem. I don't know what it is, but it's like, she's addicted to something. You're wrong, but from, you're wrong. No, I'm not wrong. I swear to, I'm going to look it up afterwards. No, because I'm no, I'm telling thing. you, <laughs> I'm telling you. She has an addiction. It's a thing. It appears that she has an addiction, but I'm telling you, you're wrong. I disagree. You, uh, no, no, no. I I'm know gonna, what you're referring to. I'm going to pull it up. I know what you're referring to. It appears that she has an Oh, addiction. I see. Okay. But she doesn't. Well, this is what I know so far. Okay. So, so far, she has an addiction. You are under... You are extrapolating. That's... You are under the impression that Caltaine... That's what Selena's under the impression. Selena is under the impression that, that Caltaine is recovering has from... Has an addiction. Has an addiction, is recovering from an immense force upon her... But okay, we will find out later That's what that there's talking. more than it seems to be. <laughs> so dramatic. Okay, okay so anyway, halfway. what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'm Selena, just curious. Oh, BT Dubs, Selena. There's like a carnival in town. Meets a witch, <gasps> Baba Yellowlegs. Uh, Baba, who is working at the carnival and has come to the castle grounds. Selena goes to the woman to get help deciphering a riddle tied to the magic word mark. This is verbatim from the wiki. She wikia. has been inf- the word mark she's been investigating. The witch says the riddle describes what word mark? Three- Ref- refresh our luck recollect. Okay, so there's like these word marks that were around that are like in the thingy and like please, you explain. I don't know. She was just found the word mark. She and just she doesn't found. Know that's what I she was in the middle of training. Know. She was in the middle of training with Nehemia and to she decipher word marks when Nehemia died, like, and she has seen these word marks right, around. And, was and she's like, about it. she's like, WTF? Where the fuck did these just come from? And so she's trying to figure out more about where these word marks came from. Right. Oh, also, that beforehand, Dorian went to go see the witch and the Baba Yellowlegs and was like asking about shit his powers because he had no idea what the fuck is going yeah, on he's, he's like, like um, he's like hi um i can move things with my mind um am is that I- normal am- <laughs> And she's like, no. Moot next. Yeah. So anyway, so th- that was beforehand anyway. Um, so yeah, when, when Selena goes to see this witch, the witch says that there's a riddle that describes the three word keys necessary to open the word gate. So the word gate is like this door to another realm mm-hmm. that like in the first book, excuse me, Cain opened the gate and like let the evil magic creature thing when that she killed. When he fought against her in like the final realm, right? Right. So... That's a whole thing. And there's three keys that fully open the word gate. And there's so a riddle. three keys will open three gates or th- three keys together will open a massive gate. Is right. that what you're trying to say? Yes. Okay. Sorry. So there are three <laughs> keys that will then open a Big gate. monstrous gate, but independently people are open able to open miniature gates. Yes. Exactly. Because Kane was able to open, open that other gate. the gates without all It's a little three. confusing. Okay. 
we're just going to roll with it. It's like you have localized power to open a localized source. But if you have massive power, as in the three word keys, you can open a massive gate. Which feels like an annoying cop out to me writing wise. But we're going to go with it because I don't care. I feel so, like when you break it up and like put it to context of like the story, because the story is very nuanced and caveat and there's a lot going on that you don't realize is going on i understand on. but what bothers me and again i don't have all the information so that's fair yeah but what i don't like about some of these stories is i'm like i the way my brain works i'm like i need to i can't live with this lack of understanding like why no is there no, no. This- i know i understand <laughs> which is why throne of glass is such an intriguing series I'm like, why because- is he opening this gate i thought there were keys it's because like, you never know what the fuck con- is going on yeah, i'm very confused <laughs> no one ever knows okay at least i didn't know if it was like, just me being dumb mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> nobody knows it yeah i don't know what's going on so anyway that's that's my understanding of what's going on thus far so the bobby yellow legs the witch says that the person who I said Baba. I thought you said Bobby. My bad. Baba. Yellow legs. Baba. Says the person Ah, ah, ah. who finds the keys, the word keys, opens the gate, will wield incredible power, enough to control the world and others. The witch then attacks Selena. Yes, she does. And Selena kills her. Pointless scene. Moving on. mm. It was a pointless scene. Mm. I knew she was going to kill the fucking witch. She was stupid. How does this witch even exist in the world if magic is dead? I don't understand. So anyway, like, if the king persecuted all these witches, why is this random bitch still, like, running, like, selling people shit at a carnival? Don't understand. But anyway, I'm sure some other Ear person... Muffs. Take off your ears. What? Take off your ears. No, we're, we're not going to talk about this. We'll get to it later. I will correct myself later if I am wrong. I will apologize for my my misunderstanding. No, you won't once. apologize. You'll say, from what I was understanding at this time. Well, that's this what is- I understood at the time. <laughs> I will tell you, once I have more information, if my interpretation was incorrect. But thus far, it's a little confusing. Anyway. That's the point. I don't know that. So anyway. <laughs> she looks insane right now. You guys can't see her, but she looks weird as fuck. I was so hiding anyway. behind my mic cover. <laughs> so anyway. So she says, Sel- Selena finally, finally figures out the riddle. So Bobby L. Likes tells her this riddle about the word keys. And it leads to where one of the three word keys was hidden. Yeah. But it's gone. Oh no! And Mort, the magic door knocker, who we've talked about, who we I love hate, this man. Confirms <laughs> no, we love this New York man. Confirms her fear that the King of Otterlin, Dorian's father, has one of the word keys, which is where a we should probably leave big off deal. as a dun dun dun, dun and dun, leave dun. a note for our sponsors. Oh yeah, we're taking a break. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna leave a note for our sponsors, and we're just gonna leave with the fact that the King of Otterlin, aka the Big Bad, aka the fucking asshole who has started a genocidal war against anyone who's not like him, a.k.a. Dorian's father. As a hard work. <laughs> yep. We'll be back. I have a lower tolerance than you. Chuck, chuck, chuck. You can have another one. You're not going to be drunk <laughs> Do you want me to get you another one? Chug the fucking bed of it. Chug it. Chug the bed of it. Let me It doesn't have to do with any tolerance. It has to do with the fact that you're fucking limp. Uh, also that I'm like 5'1 and you're like a giant. Maybe that helps. <laughs> I feel like it's funny that no one knows that like you are a good foot. <laughs> I am a Oompa Loompa <laughs> and Ronnie is a giraffe. <laughs> There's a problem Like we here. can't even do like the doom, 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 where people go like opposite directions because like I can't get shorter than her. <laughs> I think it's a hilarious juxtaposition, don't you? <laughs> I think it's perfect. I'm cool and tall and you're short and weird. <laughs> You. <laughs> you bitch. I'm tall and have a higher tolerance and you're short and can't chuck a fucking white Yeah, you only have a higher tolerance than me because you're taller than me. I'm sorry. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. I will. Give me a second. Give me a second. Are 
You're taking like deep, meaningful. It's con- literally the thing is the only. You're reason- taking contemplative beverages. Sips. The only reason I can't chug it is because it's got bubbles. <laughs> Does it upset your tummy? It's not that it upsets my tummy. It rumbles your tummy. It's that for some reason, even as a kid, I never liked bubbles. Okay, just chug it. I'm trying. I'm trying. If you vomit later, don't blame me. I'm puke. <laughs> I'm not quite there. Hi. Have you ever found yourself unable to commit a murder? Well, <laughs> we have too. Uh, introducing our specialized service called Scare the Shit Out of Someone at scaretheshitoutofsomeone.com. You want to kill them? We wish we could kill them, but we can't because we're too emotionally traumatized. So you know what we're going to do instead? We're going to pretend to kill them. We're going to give them a wake up call. And we're going to get them the F out of here. <laughs> yeah. Call our service. That's it. Uh, we're not going to have a catchy end because we really don't know how to end anything, including lives. <laughs> I thought I was important. I thought I was meaningful to a story. I thought I'd give information that would I don't know, lay with someone forever. But you know what? I'm just Baba Yellow Legs. And apparently I'm a write-off joke. Well, you will see. Because Baba Yellow Legs is never a write-off joke. Have you ever hated eating your vegetables? I have. Well, so have I. Really? Because I thought I was the only one who didn't like broccoli or kale. Well, everyone hates kale. Kale's just hateable. Like the color yellow. Oh, yeah. Everyone should go to stopthecolorellow.com to find more information about how the color yellow needs to be, I don't know... It's just completely boycotted at this point because the color yellow gives me some really seriously weird vibes. So, if you want to stop the color yellow and kale, go to stopthecolorellow.com. I promise it's a real site and I promise you'll actually find something there because www.stopthecolorellow.com is actually the website for this podcast. <laughs> and we're back. Those yes. were our sponsors. I really hope you enjoyed them. I am inebriated. And we have another drink. Yes. What do we have, Ronnie? We have a... <laughs> it's a doppelganger. Heineken. Oh, God, I can't. It, we both got Heinekens because you know what? I've never classes. had a Heineken. She's never had a Heineken, which I think is criminal is i feel delicious. like this is what white moms have on the beach no that's corona <laughs> no that's not corona fancy white moms no no, no, no i feel like oh yeah it's fancy my mom had corona moms. light yeah well that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're kind of right um anyway fancy uh, white moms have wait, a wait, wait, let's let's we have gonna... a sippy sippy ready um did you hear the clank not your cup of tea it's not that it wasn't my cup of tea is that it's that it kind of was my cup of tea and i wish it wasn't my cup of tea (laughs) it's pretty good it's easy to get down heineken it's kind of unfortunate how easy it is to get down none of this is sponsored by the way it's like it's just us being us anyway this is why i mispronounce it so that way you can get sued i say and i say Heineken. Ipas. In Ipas. You see, I can never be legally reliable for anything because they won't know what the fuck I'm saying. So anyway. Continue. Let's get back into it. So where we left off, Selena finds out and Mert, Mert, Mort Mort. confirms that, excuse me, the King of Otterland has the, one of the word keys, one of the three word keys. Yes. One of the, how many? Three. Three. Is a magic number. Selena sus- so I'm reading the fan wiki that Selena suspects the king has the second key and she knows she has to find the third one or the other ones before he does. Wait. 
repeat that because it he... says on the fan wiki that the king that she suspects the king has the second key and she knows she has to find the third one but from what i read the book i think the fan wiki's wrong i think it's saying that he has one of the three keys okay we'll and just she go... wants to find we're not the other we're using ones. okay re- reminder we're using the fan wiki wiki as a basis for you so just go off of what you think yeah so you think he has one yeah it's it, from what i understand reading the book he has a key she wants to find the other keys okay that's your understanding right from my understanding from the book um and she th- and so selena thinks nehemia was researching this before her death and selena's kind of hurt because nehemia didn't share this with her and they were supposedly best friends and Nehemia was doing all this shit behind her back and knew about the word keys and didn't tell her <laughs> here's the thing though like in retrospect I completely understand Selena's port Selena's point of view, but also <laughs> Selena didn't share with Nehemia a very critical piece of information that we'll get to later. Oh, so are they really best friends? <laughs> are they really it best feels friends? Like mutual deceit. It feels like they're both like acquaintances who wish they could count each other as more than friends. That's the most accurate thing I've heard. That was they're a both, really good way to put yeah, that. Yeah, they're both like they're in the very ac- lonely people who want a best friend but can't trust they, other they people. can't tr- no i feel like they also can't trust themselves enough to trust themselves to have another friend right like they if they you can't trust yourself how can you trust other people if you, if you don't love, love yourself <laughs> how the hell are you gonna <laughs> love somebody else <laughs> rupaul wisdom this is why we're best friends <laughs> I love you, bitch. not lovers but uh, we're best friends <laughs> yeah contrary to popular belief anyway <sighs> So, yeah, it feels like they both just have a lot of mutual deceit going on. Um, and they both, like, wanted to be close friends, but really, like, they with hid all this each stuff. Other. They, they hid things from each other. I genuinely want to. This is me, in retrospect, having read most of the books. Like, I, w- I, I hope, I think, hope, pray that they wanted to care enough Mm-hmm. And wanted to trust each other enough, but they just wanted to protect each other even more than that. Like, right? I wish that Selena wanted Nehemia to know everything, but she just wanted to protect her more than she wanted her to know it. Which, at the end of the day, if yeah. that's verbalized, then I think that that's a stronger sentiment. I mean, plot wise, I I get those motivations, but you know, if I was a character, right like, now I'm like Superman. I'm like, what's with this white knighting bullshit? Just yeah, tell like, people the truth, man. Like. like hashtag sober thoughts as well she just really cared about her but hashtag drunk thoughts drinking a bikini can some bullshit come on you were friends (laughs) like i don't know i just feel like this whole like i'm protecting you shit is not ever helpful these are both strong independent self-made women i feel like they what are you protecting selena you're teaching her dark magic like come on get over your shit the king's fucking assassin she's kind of a badass like what are you protecting her from just a wee bit of a badass not that I don't, much. Know. I don't know. It's just annoying. We'll so, never know. So anyway, so Selena's kind of hurt that Nahimi has been she's keeping kind a of. secret from her, which, you know, I get. After Nahimi is dead, she finds out this. So yeah, that's this like, it's Nehemiah's it's like dead. an added betrayal on the t- on top of the fact that one of the last words that Nahimi had said to her was, you're a coward. Right. Which hurts that much more. And I will say this about Selena, my ca- my mini character analysis, I guess, oh, is what no. I really like about <laughs> Selena. And I don't know how SJM does this. I can't really explain how, but the vibes I get from Selena mm-hmm. that I really do like is, and we, we mentioned this kind of earlier, but it's like this vibe of the way she's acting is only half of who she really is. You know, like I feel like who she really is is a vulnerable person. Right. And she's like, putting she up a strong... is a loving person. She is a caring person. She she's is a, a person lonely who's person. vulnerable. But she's putting up the I'm a lone wolf. I love being a lone wolf. I don't need any fucking As a defense mechanism. Front. So you get the sense of conflict within her, even within the second book. And right. that's but why... you know it's fake. You know it's fake that she's in desperate need to be well, with that's, other people. That's why I love the fourth book, because it really shows a turning point with her character. We're not there yet. I know, but I'm I'm saying <laughs> I like that, and my friend likes the third book because it's the immediate precursor and reason mm. for the turning point. Shout out to Kush, she's great. Love Kush, not not weed. <laughs> Kush, okay. Kush, her, her love Kush. Former roommate, she's great. Not former roommate, she's still my roommate in my heart because I love her <laughs> in your heart. But she geographically, she does on. not live. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, 
Um, so Kush is gonna be so flattered that she's mentioned again she's in the like, podcast. God. She's, she's gonna be like, "Stop talking about me, Ronnie." Yeah, she's gonna be like, "Please don't talk about me." Um. <laughs> so anyway, uh, where am I? Okay, so Selena decides to open a portal. Okay. To the other world to try and talk to Nehemia. Mm. Which does not go Very over well. Not smart. <laughs> which it doesn't go over well. And Nehemia basically is like, Don't talk to me. I'm <laughs> dead. You shouldn't be opening portals to talk to dead people. That's dumb. <laughs> it's not a good idea. And she says she basically indicates to Selena that her that Nehemia says to Selena that her death, meaning Nehemia's death, mm-hmm. was necessary to set events in motion that were ne- like necessary to kill the king or I defeat the king rather. defeat the king it's it's kind of like that grandiose sense of my death was worthy and she's like, a martyr she's yeah, basically yeah essentially and we talked about this earlier with like a different book series but like there's a strong there's a strong pull of fate we mm-hmm. talked about this with the from blood and ash series with mm-hmm. um Jennifer Amentrout, I think. And I'm, Twilight. <laughs> and Twilight. But there's a strong sense of fate. And there's a strong sense of fate within this series. Right. So this is where that kind of motif of fate and destiny comes in again. And it's one of many. Well, it's interesting because as much as there is a weird motif of like, not weird is the wrong word, but I mean, I mean weird as in like kind of unexpected, okay. unexpected okay. from this particular, because the way that the series starts off, it seems unexpected. It seems non-supernatural until right. you get into the supernaturality of it. Right. Like, even the supernatural stuff seems to have its own logic to it. That Because it was suppressed. You know, so, but, so it seems a little odd. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. There's, like, an underlying current of, like, fate, destiny, like, whatever. But it seems like... Based on Nehemia's character and the way Selena would interpret this as her as a character is like this was all thought out. Like this was part of I the just, plan. Like you said earlier, and I remember this, so therefore I'm not that drunk, that like you didn't quite <laughs> understand Nehemia's death. Yeah. And I remember reading this scene and thinking like, okay, honey, I understand that you're saying this to Selena when she's trying to contact you, but like... You're not making her feel better. It, you're not making her feel better, one. And two, you're not really making sense. Because how, how the actual F could you know? I understand that. And I understand retrospectively that there's this, like, incurrence of fate. Mm-hmm. But also, like, what the fuck? No, I understand. It's hard for me to articulate this correctly. Like, even sober, I kind of think I'd have a little bit of a hard time. But it's like... It's like one of those thoughts that you have in your head but can't... Right. What it feels like is that there's a supernatural element to these events. However, I think from Nehemia's perspective, it was planned. I don't think Nehemia sees it as a supernatural thing until she's dead. I think a lie... But then when she's dead, she gets some insight. Right. Does that make sense? It under- I understand what you are trying to say. Like, I don't think Nehemia had in the back of her head, like, oh, this will work out supernaturally. I think she thought... She was doing she something was, in the moment. Right. She was having a, a plan. Like, a, this will work out based on what I can control. I feel like removed from any situation, though, you also feel that thing. Right. It's a it's it's kind of a sticky situation, especially because we're only on the second book, and it's kind of, it's hard for me to like really input to that. But like, there's a sense of fate, there's a sen- sense of destiny, there's a sense of supernatural influence that we quite don't understand. Mm-hmm. And well, this is a problem with a lot of books: is this undercurrent of supernatural fate destined mm-hmm. things that like it's I easy think- to pass off weird stuff as supernatural, right? You know, and I think a lot of people even to misinterpret. Uh, stories where it's not explicitly stated like this is fate this is destiny it's more implied yeah you know i think that's that's in this book but i think this book's unique in that it's got both it's got characters just like very meticulously planning the events that they want to happen for their cause and i feel like this but at the same time fate intervening does that make sense? Yes. But I feel like this instance with Nehemia... Sorry, I'm shuffling. We're like shuffling a lot. I'm sorry. No, I'm getting more comfy. I feel like this instance with Nehemia... We need like and, bean bags. And Selena specifically, mm-hmm. where she's like saying, don't contact me, is kind of like a very Nehemia thing. Because even in the beginning, Nehemia was very about her country, about the rules, about the lifestyle, about living in the court, about assimilating to the court. And... So she was very, what mm-hmm. you would expect to be cut and paste yeah. diplomat. 
And so in this instance of a supernatural contact with Selena, where Selena was trying to get closure, she did not supply it. Right. And that really traumatized Selena. But that's quintessential Nehemia. It is quintessential Which Nehemia. I agree with you that I think it's two people trying to be best friends who, who just don't know. They didn't have a... I don't want to say they didn't have a strong enough relationship because they lived together for, for like a while. They like, but like they bonded over their mutual dislike of the King of Otterland, but and their, their need goals. to assimilate to the culture of the King. Right. And I feel like if they had more time, they would have been like bestie boos like us, but they didn't have that time. And so when Nehemia was contacted, she was like, get out of here. You cannot contact me. Yeah, and you're right. It feels Selena like Selena just wanted closure and to her, it felt like betrayal, but, Nehemia really was I hope it was to protect her but we don't know enough about Nehemia on like a quote earth side realm well we only know Nehemia through Selena we only know her again through her perspective that's a very good point but we also only know her truly on Selena's perspective while she was not Earth side because they don't live on Earth, but while she was alive. Yeah, we'll say Earth for, um, I guess, you know. You know, alive. Purpose, the purposes of In our whatever discussion. In whatever ethereal but. realm. We don't really know her. We don't know what she knows. We don't know what grand plans she may now be privy to. But, like, right. my point is, like, this was a very quintessential Nehemia thing to protect everyone involved. Right. But at the same time, it was an extreme betrayal to Selena. Well, you who know what it felt like? It feels like that. Herself friend you make when you're in an extreme situation you know it's like me and ronnie worked at like a sleepaway camp <laughs> so like you make really really close friendships with those people you're because you're in of, a stressful ass situation right. watching seven year olds fight over a hairbrush in yeah, the morning you're like in you know metaphorically the trenches together so it's like outside of this situation, you, you wouldn't might be friends. Not be friends, and I think that that's what that kind of feels like to me between Selena and Nehemia is that they're in the trenches. They wouldn't be friends if not for the fact that they were in the hassle together. But at the same right. time, I feel like if because so, like with my friends back at camp, I feel like if I reached out to them now, they would respond to me. Right, because but you it's have like, a shared experience. But it doesn't mean that you're besties. Right, it in doesn't the sense mean you outside know of your someone. shared experience. It doesn't mean that outside of that, like, you know, you want to feel really close to them. No, I agree. Your shared experience, but it's like, it doesn't mean you know them really. And that's what that feels like. And that's why even as a reader, I was so hurt for Selena. Because yeah. you see Nehemia through Selena's eyes and she's desperate for a friend. She's desperate, desperate. to love someone and trust someone. You know, and, and Nehemia really, I and, think, couldn't be that for her. And I feel like Selena felt like she couldn't love or trust Dorian as much as she wanted to because he was... Because he's the prince. The crown prince and the right. king's son. And e neither, not even and Kale either. Not even fucking because vegetable. Vegetable because he has she a can loyalty trust to the her king. leafy greens. How because, sad is that to not because, trust your balanced <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> No matter how much she loves him or he loves her, it's like his loyalty is to the king. To and the he crown. makes that abundantly clear in the fact that he goes against Dorian and says, right. Selena was right in killing these people when, right. she, when she didn't. But like, mm -hmm. it shows you a lot. It shows you. It's I don't sad. Know. It's really sad. This conversation really gutted me, but you can continue. I'm sorry. so sorry. No, no, no. It's fine. We, we, we kind of branch off and have our little discussions. I know we do, but like this but, part, uh, I could continue on forever because I really just, I think it was a quick quintessential selena moment i think it i was really a like selena and i can't really explain why because in some ways as a reader like because originally you didn't like her i didn't like her at first but like, now I, you do because i felt like and i feel this way about the series so let me admit this because yeah. this ties into this how i feel about for. <laughs> this is how i tie into this is it ties into selena as a character a little mm -hmm. bit for me full disclosure it's like and i'll get into some things a little bit later but like I really like this series. I do. Yeah. As much as I have gripes with it, I really enjoy it. Aww. However. You're welcome. I feel like on some level a little bitter because I don't think it's as good as the hype. Does that make sense? You're also on the second book. That's true. That's, that's definitely true. And I feel like Selena, and I feel like I'm probably going to get this as i get further into the book you will that's the intention that's i understand Sel where you're going i feel the same way about the series as i did about selena and selena is ahead 
of the series in terms of my warming up to. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I felt like Selena was a cliche at the beginning. I was like, I'm so sick of these, like, I'm a badass bitch, like, stories. You know, they always come off so contrived. But I res- but even in the first podcast, you admitted that you respected that this was a different one. Right. You 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 liked Selena, but you didn't like her. Right. But was- as I've gotten more into the series, I recognize that Sarah J. Mass sort of frames Selena's arc arc in a way that makes me like her more i didn't like selena but i also liked her i didn't want to like her but i liked her and later you'll kind of see and we'll get to this later people will divide selena and other people Mm -hmm. because they are distinctly different personalities and i liked this book Mm -hmm. because personally it's where i saw the branch of her character from the first to the second right you get a little bit more of her and i I know it's not always productive to say that whether or not female characters are quote likable or not yeah but personally as a reader Mm -hmm. i attribute that to every character yeah i know it's been stigmatized towards female characters right which is unfair that's true quite unfair but i the way i read and you know me so you can attest to this i <laughs> oh, say the no, same I shit about male characters you know what i'm saying like yeah. i want my main characters to be likable that's just how i read that's not everybody i'm not saying that that's the end all be mm-hmm. all you know like if other people want their main characters to be an asshole or an anti-hero like that's totally fine personally yeah i have to like in some capacity my main character whether they're male or female i think that's because i told you um this book is my second favorite Mm -hmm. behind queen of shadows and i think that that's really because i am really invested in character development through the plot Mm -hmm. i'm like plot is like important to me but it's less of a prominent aspect of how i approach a story i like seeing the people behind it i'm generally a very Ooh, you cracked. I, that was a good crack. sorry i crack when i'm trying to stay focused you cracked um, your knuckles that was pretty yeah good. i i i like to experience people because i don't understand them so mm-hmm. i like I, I saw how from the first book which was not one of my favorites i did not like it was a good book but it wasn't like it wasn't nearly as good as the fourth or the third or the prequel IMO. But I like how from the first to the second, you see such a character development throughout it where it kind of shif- shifts your perspective and understanding of someone you've been introduced to and following since the first, which is why I really liked the second one. Okay. But sometimes people, I've talked to other people and you've kind of given me the impression, correct me if I'm wrong, that the second wasn't your favorite because yeah. there wasn't a lot of dynamic plot. You stayed localized in the same place. Not much happened. And the most, the majority of the plot happened toward the mid to end, which is kind of t- typical, but like it happened very fast and very all at once. Well, that's partially true. I, I think that analysis is fair for sure. Mm-hmm. But I think that, Part of my issue with the second book, why I didn't enjoy it as much as I liked the first one, now, okay. since we're on this discussion, and then we'll continue with the plot. Yeah, sorry. I mean, we're on this discussion. You embarked on this drunken tirade with us. In- <laughs> this is our discussions. <laughs> if you want to have this on in the background while you're like clean, go ahead. But like, <laughs> yeah, like since we're on this topic, and again, I can elaborate a little bit more as we get towards the end. But I think that just to to because it's been brought up like Mm -hmm. i think i enjoyed the first one more than the second one was because as much as i enjoy in a series of forwarding of an overarching plot Mm -hmm. i liked the subplot or the main plot like subplot of the series main plot of the first book more yeah i felt like which is completely understandable i can understand why you say that like it just i think it's a it's a matter of you you look at it from a literary perspective as a story building perspective that's what well, you approach it's even just what i find entertaining it's, like i don't even yeah. claim like that you know in all my vast wisdom of, she's an english and know, history like, major i study exercise physiology you know <laughs> so like, like a but i just mean like even as somebody who studies literature like i appreciate why somebody would prefer this book because it it really advances the overarching plot mm-hmm. personally um, I enjoyed the plot of the first book. I felt like this book was a lot of exposition. It felt like a lot of setup, personally, to mm-hmm. me. Which and, is un- understandable. And 
I totally get why somebody would really like that because there was a lot of like, ooh, like, you know, like mm -hmm. questions unanswered. I want to know what's happening next. This is intriguing. Totally, totally get that. Personally, I liked following a quest, you know, to some extent in the first book. Does that make sense? Tell me what your Harry, favorite Harry Potter book was. The third one. Okay. What was your second favorite? The Half-Blood Prince. Okay. So I'm the same way, but I, I think that to this day, the Half-Blood Prince slightly outweighs because I enjoy the story building and the basis. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is relevant because I feel like an analogy would be the Half-Blood Prince would be the first book of Throne of Glass and... Half of Prince would be the sec the second book of Throne of Glass, in the sense that there's a lot more story building, a lot more. You mean Prisoner of Azkaban would be the first book? Yes, uh, third book. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just clarifying the for the third book of Harry I know what you mean. They don't know what you Harry mean. Harry Potter number three would be the first book of Throne of Glass. Harry Potter right. number six would be the second book. And I, that's a personal preference. Neither are bad. No, neither are bad. But that's my point in that how you interpret the story is dependent on like how you take away what your favorite books are and for what reasons but that's i don't know you know like even you know even as somebody who likes to write their own stories that tends to happen in second books so i don't i don't the flag icy it staircase is available shut up <laughs> no it's not <laughs> um, yes it is i took it down you i'm trying to get it officially that. published help me out you guys but like <laughs> i i I understand that. So, like, I don't say this as someone who's criticizing the concept. No. It's just I enjoyed more. Holy fuck, there's a big bug. Is there? Yeah, yeah. there's a big bug in here. It's so, okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I just enjoyed more, like, having that first plot, you know? And it just yeah. tends to happen in a second book where the second book has a plot, but it ends up being more of a setup book. I just kind of like the setup books. That's fine. That's your, yeah, that's my interpretation. And personally, even with my own books, not to bring them up, but just as a, because I want you guys to understand that as a writer, like, I get this thing, you know? Like, my brother likes the second book the best. And I feel like even in my own writing, it's very similar that the second book is more of a setup book and the first book has a whole plot. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know where we started on this. <laughs> anyway. I'm like, so sorry. But like, yeah. Just to make a point, it's just, it, it needed to be said. And I didn't. I it, feel it definitely needed to be said. And it was relevant we had, where we were. And it feels weird if we were to just said this Listen, end, we've been but. skirting. I've been like putting off this. The, okay. This podcast has been delayed by like a week, two weeks maybe three and a half weeks because I've just been bombarded with work, but I've been so excited to talk about it. And every, every time she's like, can we record tonight? I'm like, uh, yes. And then I'm like, <laughs> push it off. It's okay. And it's then okay. I fall asleep. So anyway, we're getting more into but, the plot. Yeah, we'll we've been excited more. to talk about this. Yeah, we'll and talk these more. Very topics. We'll talk more. So that's yes. just my feelings on it. I, we hope that makes sense. But, yes. um, so anyway, what happens is, so Selena gets to Nehemia, talks, or not gets to, talks to Nehemia, and Nehemia's like, don't fucking bother me, this is all relevant, <laughs> like, whatever. And so then Archer shows up um, when Nehemia disappears, and he explains that Nehemia left their rebel group, so she was colluding with mm -hmm. Archer's whole rebel group against the King of Otterland, and she left that group. Because and, why? Because she didn't agree with their tactics. Correct. That was, that was what I was waiting for. And he wanted, and it says in the wiki that he wanted to br use their those tactics to bring down the king. Correct. Which she was not for. Nehemia had a different approach in mind than... Than Archer and his whole group. Yes. Like, it was just a difference of how do we overthrow this monarchy. That's the as answer it tends to, to your, happen. Are you Robespierre or... Rational. Well, that was your misunderstanding earlier, which yeah. is why did Nehemia die? It's because she had different times. Right now, I feel no. stupid kind of saying that because I did read this book. And now that I'm reading the fan wiki, I'm like, oh, right. He did do that. Yeah. So uh, sorry. I've been like, it, I, I held it off to this, out of it right now. I held it off to this moment. You should be proud of me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I swear to God, I did read this book. I, but now you now you remember. That did elude me for a second because I've been holding... I read. I finished this book like two weeks ago. <laughs> so I'm a little bit like iffy on I've the details. I've been through a lot. I'm a little bit iffy on I the details. I work a 40-hour work week. <laughs> Hold on, my fan wiki. I like. help old people take off stim pads, like electric <laughs> so stim. <laughs> he explains... Archer tells Selena basically... That because Nehemia didn't agree with his tactics, that he's the one who who killed her. Yes. Um, Which it, is, it feels like it comes out of nowhere. It does. It really does. I was like, 
Okay. Okay. So. Where are they when this happens? Especially because Archer was introduced in this book. Like, where are they when this happens? They. I don't know. It doesn't say. I don't remember. Catacombs. They're the catacombs. Yes. Because Nehemia disappears. You're right. Yep. I will say my only my my criticism is on principle. I don't think that that was a bad reveal i think that they should have introduced archer in the first book whoa, somehow whoa. you haven't mentioned the library the library the, the hooded library? figure I don't remember that. the hooded figure Who? that she found skulking the halls i don't remember that at all okay there was a hooded figure that was skulking the halls <laughs> okay that happens but anyway, Archer, <laughs> this has been like you see little weird. instances of weird like it feels weird figures. that a character who's introduced in the second book is responsible for the death of a character you met in the first book does that you know what i mean it feels weird but that's what the case is because it's a whole like contriving plot to overthrow the king and people i get it but yeah. i feel like this should have been like i should have been like she should have introduced archer in the first book even as like just a concubine you yeah. know what I mean? Like, even as just like, oh, there's Archer. You know, like, I don't know. Like, just something, anything. It just felt weird. Like, that this guy who we just met in this book, yeah, he did it. He did it all. Like, you're like, okay. And this is all being revealed in the catacombs. Yeah, you're like, all right, whatever. So, You don't I, remember? I accept it. You don't it happens. Rem- wait, wait, hold on. Pause. Pause. Okay. What? You- don't remember anything about the library no i don't i remember dorian makes the books fly out of the library that's all i remember the obsidian i don't remember that are you sure that's in this book i don't remember that it's before she leaves i don't remember that is there nothing in this fucking wikia about we'll see let's get to it the Hold goddamn on. we're library. almost done you can mention we'll, it when we'll, we're done it's almost done kind of so anyway my gosh she's like i'm gonna fucking shit a chicken (laughs) she's pissed as fuck as she should be that archer like admits to her that he's the you know i mean she acts dumb and she's like oh wow and so she tricks him and then she eventually like gets all the information out of him and then she kills his ass whoa Uh, as she should he also skipped another part no i didn't yeah you did not it on the says, wikia. So he killed Who killed Nehemia? Archer, I said that. No, Archer had it orchestrated. Yes. Who killed Nehemia? I don't know who did. One of the previous contestants. <gasps> oh! Oh! Oh, I remember. What's his fucking name? That guy. Oh yeah, and Selena goes and kills him. Yes, in the corner and she brutally and, she, and he, what's his name? I don't remember his name. He I don't want to know his name. Okay, I so kind of blocked it out, but douchebag like, contestant who was a former person in the first book. He was the the absolutely vicious, vile, sadistic asshole yeah we don't remember mutilate the bodies of his of his victims psych ted bundy number one psychopath yeah like ted bundy over here is like a murderer and he before so selena goes after him because she's like got a suspicion before she finds out it's archer that it's him and he is the one who killed nehemia he's the one who like actually like did the killing but he tells selena before he dies that duke parrington who is like the one who's engaged to like grave oh no 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 it was grave it was grave the assassin Last name yeah, Grave. His name is Grave. It's not Duke Parrington. Who does he blame? He blames some other guy. Like he he says to Selena that some dude who was his sponsor, like was the one who told him to kill Nehemia, which isn't true. We find out later in this conversation that Archer's the one who did it. It was a whole big conspiracy. But she kills Grave pretty brutally. She like does some really fucked up shit. Minister Mullison. Minister Mullison. That's his name. Yeah. So he's I kind know of things. Yeah, it doesn't really matter because ultimately Minister it's- Mollison was then found. Uh, he was cornered at a meeting and then he was uh, like questioned for the directed assassination of Nehemia by grave, which is a gr- which is yeah, it's a, totally. a grave like mistake. <laughs> but I'm anyway, sorry, but like, like even there's also this whole subplot about Dorian fighting against his dad and his cousin, what's his face? A Dorian's cousin? Yeah, was Dorian's douchebag cousin remember. Roland or something? Yeah, I thought Roland was his brother. No, Roland's his cousin. Roland was. Who, I thought Roland the was other his kid brother. Was, the kid is his cousin. Roland's his cousin. No, the kid is his brother. Roland's his cousin. So like, there's a whole th- subplot too that's kind of like becomes relevant i guess later about dorian fighting against the king and his cousin about opening more salt mines which is like you know where Sel- oh, yeah. selena was it's a whole thing yeah that's a subplot but the point we'll is we'll talk about it later but basically grave was recruited by archer but 
framed to be recruited by a minister of the king's table. Right. So, so it was assumed thing. to be a subplot. But she murders the shit out of Graves. <laughs> she, she brutally murders Archer admits to her face that he's the reason that Nahimi is dead. And he, then recruited he framed Hop- minister, what's his face? Minister Mullison, whatever his yeah, name is. Yeah, Minister Mullison. Um, and so, yeah. So then Sorry, Selena, you didn't mention that. I was like, I need yeah, to mention no, that. No, you're totally right. Thank you for reminding me because I totally forgot. So Selena kills Archer's ass pretty, pretty hard. And um, so then a creature, it says on the wiki that after she kills Archer, a creature steps through the still open portal as they fight and Kaol and Dorian, who were alerted by a dream Dorian had. Oh, yeah, that did happen. <laughs> yeah, arrive. That did happen. Arrive. And Selena has a dog who we mentioned in the last one named Fleafoot. Fleafoot. Still a stupid name. I love Chases it. Chases the creature back into the portal. Kale goes to save the dog. Selena follows closely behind to save the both. She's, oh, and she goes into her true fae form, which, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> I said in the last podcast I thought Selena was secretly fae, and you oh, made me yeah. sound like I was nuts. You gaslighted the shit out of me. I love fuck you, you, but I'm so sorry. Fuck you. She's fae. I knew it. I fucking knew it. I called it. You can check uh, that Selena goes into like her true faith. I told form. you you can't trust me. I told you I would literally supply you with nothing. She so that does means do I that. need to listen. It's not that I'm like, okay, I don't need to be like an apologist, but I'm not someone who gaslights on the regular. I literally told her going into this, I will neither confirm nor deny everything. Dude, you it's like if I was reading Harry Potter for the first time and I was like, does Sirius die? And you're like, who's Sirius? He's not even a character. In like the sec <laughs> in the third book, I'd be like, um, why would you think that Sirius dies? He's his godfather. He's ex- incredibly yeah, relevant so to good at that. And I'm like so stupid that I don't know. So anyway, like so yeah. So she tr- transforms into her whole fey form. Yeah. And they see it, which is like a big deal. Mm-hmm. And then they manage to escape. And Selena's fey form like vanishes, and they close the portal, and like Selena finally kills Archer. It's a whole big fight scene. It's and gross. who witnesses all of it? Dorian. Dorian. So he sees her in this true magical like. I don't think Kaol was present. I think he was after the dog, so he didn't see. Yeah, it. Yeah, Dorian didn't see it. Hence no, why Kaol didn't see it. Dorian. Oops, saw I'm it. sorry. Cat Kaol. Which is a big deal because Dorian also has magic, and he's like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Um. So Kaol. So fucking Kaol decides. That the safest place for Selena is away from the King of Otterland. Mm-hmm. So he goes to uh, his father, who's like a duke or some shit. He's he's like the head of a uh, of a town, province, city, yeah, he's whatever a you want to call it, or something. He's a lord, and he's upset that K- he's been upset for a while that Kale joined the guard because, because he Kale wants... was next in line right. to take over the territory, yeah. and he was trying to train him and, and then like siphon over the power. Right. So he's like, hoo, hoo, hoo. so Kale goes to his father, and who's been at the castle counseling the king conveniently. And he said, and so Kale says he wants to send Selena to this rival country of Wendelin to dispatch the royal family. So to kill the royal family to stop this war that's going on between yeah. Wendelin and Otterland. M- mind you, this is also what the king is being is telling her. Right, but Kale's basically just forming this plan. It's like a bullshit plan just to get Selena out of Otterland because of all this stuff that's going on. I can't believe... Okay. To protect her. This white knighting bullshit. Like, he's making decisions for Selena without asking her uh-huh. or talking for to her. For the good of Selena. For Selena's own good. Meanwhile... Bullshit. It's a... Bl- fucking load of shit because selena's like this is the opposite of helping me if you would have just talked to me about this you would have realized that but now you fucked me over and made me go to like wendelin to like go kill these people when that's not Mm -hmm. helpful and this is relevant because um up until this point the throne of glass like map has been exclusively limited to this current continent but Mm -hmm. now wendelin is going to be introduced in the following book so it's i find it interesting how you you become exposed to geographical locations as they become pertinent to the context of the story sorry that's like my little side plot Um, yeah so my my love of cartography (laughs) yes she loves cartography so anyway (laughs) Um, i made her a map (laughs) you haven't finished it bitch you need to i made you a map i just need to remake it because it's not good enough okay so anyway um 
They so whatever. So in exchange for so Kaol says in exchange for his father's help and a vote in the whole thing of sending yeah. Selena to Wendlin to kill the royal family and end the he war. He needs something in return. He like he needs something in return. So Kaol agrees to his father that he'll ret- he'll resign as captain of the guard and return to like being lord of with a caveat and Neil it says and like resu- Neil yeah, Neil whatever and resume. Be, like being the lord basically like yeah. he'll he'll resu- he'll do he'll his take duty. over his father's position he'll do his duty he'll have babies and continue <sighs> the line and all that bullshit not that bullshit it's very like duke of hastings so um watch our sinful quinful sundays yeah please do they're really funny um so <laughs> on the so selena is like pissed because she's like this is the opposite of helpful thank you you piece of shit so you've done nothing to me I'm going to interrupt you because you literally have not talked about the catacombs underneath the library, the tapestry that leads to the catacombs, and the fight to the death that Selena and Dorian experience. Right, like she's trying to find the word keys and like going to- Do you remember this now? Yes, I do. Okay, and the clock tower? Right. Okay, now you can talk about it because you haven't mentioned it to this point because there's like a whole lot of subplot that hasn't yet been explained with regards to the crown of- midnight like universe that becomes pertinent later so i just want you to understand there's a subtext with the catacombs under the library and the clock tower and well, the creature that almost killed it because them. i think you you i want you to explain what you remember i don't remember that much so you explain it please <laughs> dorian and selena go exploring underneath the library where they found catacombs Mm -hmm. and they encounter a series of cells cells that are either closed or partly open are you sure this is in the second book i am positive this is in the second book i don't remember this because this is prior to her revealing her fae form because she doesn't use any kind of I admit I was listening to this while I was driving. I may have missed it. You may have missed this. This was in like one chapter, but essentially they found all these cells and they were like, whoa, this is fucking weird. BT dubs, after we're done with the synopsis, I will talk about the love triangle. So please stay tuned because I have nothing to say. (laughs) But we're we're almost done. So this is why I'm cutting in because I didn't hear any mention of it. But I forgot about that. Essentially, Dorian and Selena are are like exploring these catacombs and they have this creature that just like attacks them. And they're walking towards the obsidian clock tower that we have mentioned in the previous book. Like Mm -hmm. the large clock tower. The very important clock tower. I mean, this creature just starts, runs after them and attacks them. It's this vile creature. Oh, I just got to the fan wiki. As you're speaking, the fan wiki is talking about this. That's kind of funny. Really? Yeah, it says... On the docks before the ship sails to Wendland, Selena tells Kay all the full truth about everything, about the word keys, the creature she and Dorian killed in the tomb beneath the library, yeah. and how the king has some bigger evil plan that she still doesn't fully understand. Essentially, she understands that the king is holding people voluntarily in the catacombs under the library before the clock tower, the obsidian clock tower that we have aforementioned in previous podcasts, and she and Dorian essentially narrowly escaped took it down and while she's leaving because dorian was this white knighting fucking asshole who organized a plot to assassinate wendelin's royal family no she hey all dorian didn't oh, do that it was dorian. Kale. i'm so oh, don't you besmirch <laughs> dorian's name like this it I'm was so Kale who did that i'm inebriated by the heat again um <laughs> <laughs> it was kyle he Pause or, it when you get a second i'm go to the bathroom again yeah. <laughs> I'm almost finished my tangent. Hold on. But so essentially, like, there's this whole, like, uh, fight to the death thing that happens right. with this vile creature. It's under, coming back to me now. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's. I did hear this. I It seems unimportant in the moment, but it, uh, yeah, previously she I had seen a creature in a cloaked, in, in, like, in a cloak while she was walking and he was walking towards the library. Mm-hmm. And you get these weird vibes that something's happening within the castle that we don't know what's happening. And eventually she comes to the conclusion that the king has to know what's happening. Mm-hmm. The king has to know what's yeah, happening. There's no way he doesn't know that this shit's going on. It's so mm-hmm. intentional. There are things that are happening that the king knows what's happening. And if not, he's orchestrating what's happening right. under the catacombs. And that's where we're going to pause and let Rory's little bladder release. <laughs> I'm sorry. And we're back because Rory has released her I'm bladder sorry, in the yeah, urination the bladder station. of a child. We came pre-gamed. It's not our fault. But essentially, I ended up saying that this 
fight to the death occurred and Dorian and Selena like survived and on the ship in passing she finally tells him everything and she tells him to look up a particular date. Yeah, she lo- he looks up a particular date. I don't remember the date. It's a specific It's date, a specific though. thing. He she whispers it in his ear and he's like, "What?" But when we're reading it for the first time, we don't know. It doesn't know. tell. Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't tell, tell you either. that she whispered in his ear the date just as she whispered in his ear. Right. So then we find out later through Kale's like kind of perspective or like the, the narrations following Kale that he Correct. He basically figures out through rummaging through her shit and like hearing this date that she Speak into the mic for this I'm part, sorry, love. I'm sorry. That she is in fact Wait, wait, wait. I like how he comes to this conclusion. So if you recall, I want you to think. There's a date. There's a date. And he looks up the date. And it's the date these people died. Not just any people. Who died? That the royals mm. of, of what? Terrison died. The Galathinians, right? That's their mm-hmm. name? Died. And that their daughter, nobody knows what happened to them. But they assume her, she drowned. But they assume she drowned in the because lake outside their the house. Lake. Which... From the beginning of the first Throne of Glass book, we find out Selena was found near a frozen lake outside her house. By Arab and Hamel. By Arab and Hamel after her parents' murder. So Kegel's like, some wheels are turning. And then what does he read about the Ash River Eyes? I don't remember. The Ash River Eyes <laughs> are a turquoise with a gold ring. Right. Oh my god, you're right. And she then has he blue eyes with a what, gold not, ring. Turquoise eyes with a gold ring. The Ash River eyes, her mother's eyes. Mm-hmm. Her mother's eyes are notorious for having the specific look about them. Right. So, and her mo- and Oh, this and also that Selena mentioned casually in passing after it's revealed that she went after she goes into her fae form that she says my grandmother was fae. Mm-hmm. And the Galathinians, they're the mother or the father or somebody's mother was a fae. <laughs> and so he puts all the pieces together and he realizes that, holy shit, this Selena is, Sardothian is, is Aelin Galath- Ash River Galathinius. Because the who? lost princess of Terrasin. Because Selena's eyes are what color? turquoise with a ring of solid Which gold. is a big problem because she is the only like the biggest threat against Otterlin, the king of Otterland. And every and time he's that- just sent her to, to her Wendelin. allies in Wendelin. The, yeah. the one peop the one royal family her, her the- aunt, her great aunt Maeve. Yes. And Maeve's family. So people who could potentially ally with her against he the king has of sent Ireland. to quote assassinate in order to keep her safe. And I think Fuck it's Kale. very, very, very poetic because every time I have reread the first few books, as in the first two books, I have dissected every conversation that Aelin. Yeah, but Aelin. Kale, Kale no, 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 done no, no, fucked finish, up. Let me finish. Aelin has had with the King of Otterlin. And what does she do? She keeps her head down. Why does she keep her head down? Because she doesn't want him to see the notorious Ash River eyes. The turquoise with the ring of gold. Every time that... That's pretty interesting. I every time that. that Selena talks to the king, she notably has her hood on puts her head down it's shielded so that way he cannot see the ash river eyes because he's familiar with the ash river eyes he knows the eyes of his enemy he knows the eyes of adian he knows the eyes of all these people and she intentionally keeps her eyes down because she knows that if he sees them he'd know she was a threat yeah that's pretty crazy it's pretty crazy and i read that and i was like i didn't notice that that's pretty cool ash river because even kale has this note this like moment of reflection where he's like she always has her head down when she looks in front of the king. And he was like, I thought it was just like a note of like, <gasps> yeah, like my I, king. Yeah, I'm in front of and the then king, he's whatever. like, kind of like, oh shit, it's because she has the ash of her eyes. She's got a legit reason? She oh has the legit eyes. She is a legitimate queen of Terrison, a territory that has been so, overcome, it, oppressed by the Pretty king cool. Of I will say, I did roll. I had, a mic- I had mixed feelings. You did. I, Do you I want both, to talk about your mixed feelings now so that we've established everything? Three things. Okay, tell them. First thing, she's got another fucking name. <laughs> I'm so sick of this bitch having so many goddamn names. Everybody's got like ten names. Yeah. Pick a name. 
Yeah. I get it. Okay. That's a joke. If you guys don't understand, I don't want you coming for me. That was a joke. I get it. But like, God, of course she has another fucking name. Secondly, um, that was pretty cool. I, I will say I was a little bit, whew, that's interesting. Yeah. She, I. Secondly, though, mm. I had mixed feelings because I, I was torn between thinking, are you fucking serious? Of course the main character is revealed to be a princess. But at the same time, I genuinely did not expect that. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's mentioned so Like it's such a fantasy trope, but the way Sarah's like Sarah's like SJM sets that up or sets up Selena's character. I really didn't think she was going to go that route. But it's 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 beautiful honestly in retrospect because I've reread the first two books because I liked them. I mm-hmm. liked knowing after yeah, I I You just like hit your mic. <laughs> I I I, I hit talks, the mic screen. I'm, she's spending too much time with my Italian family. I, she's talking with her hands. I really <laughs> <laughs> Rob Massey has run out for me. <laughs> anyway, I really 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 enjoyed seeing I, I like I've mentioned like in our whole weird tangent about the character development and how I like Crown of Midnight more than I liked the first book. It's because I like seeing the character development. And so I like seeing the dichotomy between at this point, at the end of the second book, we're introduced to another character and it's entirely Aelin Ash River Galathinius. There's no at this point we understand that Aelin and Selena are separate entities. Selena has locked away Aelin. Mm-hmm. Selena is not kind. Selena is not empathetic. Selena is not a nice person. So when that seeps through, you understand that it is Aelin. Selena is a badass. Aelin is sensitive right. and kind, and she wants to have best well, friends. Well, I'm not there yet. All I know is that, I mean, I, I what you're saying makes sense and i think thinking about it that's really interesting because i was saying that there's a hidden side of selena that it's i'm not speaking from like future that, books i'm speaking from at the that, end of the second book right. i was like okay this under this is you this get is, a name to this other personality because in the second book i started to experience a sense of like this dichotomy of character like I how see. can selena be so cruel and yet so nice at the same because time? she has another fucking because she's personality a different person at the same right. time that's why i like the second I book i think it's because it's 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 i'm not speaking from a future i'm trying like okay. intently not now to speak. i now i see what you mean now i see what you mean it's because you see whatever t- whatever times in the first and second book you're like oh that doesn't seem like something that a cruel assassin would do it's like oh shit that was like this suppressed alien right. that was seeping through right it i uh, like and i'm not like like bringing in future books because i'm i'm literally like this is what i thought this is why at the end of crown of midnight i was like oh shit well like that's why it's so funny that i'm as i go through these books i try to tell you what my perspective was whilst i was at that point in the book and i understand that so i agree with you i think that once you get to this point in the book it does make a little bit more it completely redefines your understanding of aelin as a character and i well selena as a character at this point i at this point at the end of the second book in my head, I was like, Aelin is Selena. Right. Like, Selena is not Aelin. Aelin is Selena. Is, is it like that joke in, like, Lego Batman? Like, <laughs> does Batman live in Bruce Wayne's basement? No, Bruce Wayne lives in Batman's attic. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> like, like, it's like that idea. It's like that. So, like, in my head, I'm like, okay, Aelin is the core personality. Aelin is the core person that, what, that, like. Aelin is Batman. Aelin is Batman. And Selena is Bruce Wayne. <laughs> no, opposite. Opposite? Yeah, Aelin is Bruce Wayne. And Batman is the cover. No, that's the opposite. Batman is his true self. We're not getting into Batman. (laughs) Batman is who he truly is. Like when Wonder Woman lassos him and says like, who, what's your true identity? He says Batman. Oh, I didn't know that part. So then you have the right idea. Yeah, but I was misguided. It's not like Superman Clark Kent. Like Clark Kent is who Superman really is. Okay, that's I'm Batman is who Bruce Wayne really is. Aelin is Clark Kent. Superman is Elena. Okay, that makes sense. Selena, I mean. That makes more sense. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. In that case, then. It's a better analogy, too, honestly. Batman is Aelin, and Clark Kent is Selena. Yes? <laughs> I don't know what you just said. Anyway. I don't know what I just said. I think the right analogy was that Aelin is Clark Kent, and Selena is Superman. I feel like that is. Aelin <laughs> is Batman, 
Selena is Bruce Wayne. But once that was revealed at the end, Kale even reimagined his entire relationship with her. And then you can go back to the discussion. Then you can go back to the discussion with Nehemia when Nehemia was being quintessential Nehemia and saying like, get the fuck out of here. And she's like, no, don't go. Selena wouldn't have said that. Selena's a cold hearted bitch. She wouldn't fucking care. But (laughs) Aelin, we don't know this character yet, but it was uncharacteristic of Selena to say like, what? Like it was uncharacteristic mm. of Selena to it go to the great. It makes a little bit more sense. It was uncharacteristic of the character Selena to go to like Nehemia's grave, cut her palm, and bleed over. I the forgot stone. she did that. She, she did do that. It, that Kale, is not like, something that cold-hearted her. Selena would have done. Oh yeah, that's a thing I wanted to mention. So Selena mourns Nehemia obviously after she dies. Mm-hmm. That goes on for fucking ever. Which, look. If you mourned, I would mourn. If you died, I would mourn forever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I believe. It. Anyway, so. I would cry. I understand. But it's boring to read about. It is. It's but so boring. It's in her head. I but get it's it. less in her head as I get it. It's. I feel like it's. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I feel like it's a little bit of a petty complaint. But personally, like, I just think. I get you want me to understand she's sad, but it was really boring. Can I um, interject with some uh, Throne of Glass lore? Sure. So Sarah J. Moss is um, is Jewish, Mm -hmm. as I think I've told you. Mm -hmm. So in the spirit of Jewish customs, um, instead of going and presenting flowers at her grave, and flowers being something that would die, she instead goes and cuts her palm and bleeds on that. And that's her and symbol. Just some chanting. And that's her symbolism of I care, I love you, I appreciate you to her without leaving something that would die and rot, which is right. against the idea. Yeah. And that is not something that you would expect Selena to do. That's true. That's very interesting. But at the same time, it's still funny because it's like, you know, you guys weren't really like that close. Anyway, it's like conflicting. It's a very weird. Well, because then it kind of brings in the whole dual personality thing. Like Selena didn't want to be close to Nehemia, but Aelin wanted to. Mm -hmm. Or you can assume that Aelin wanted to. Yeah. It's It's all very, I have very mixed feelings about it. I feel like I I come into it more. Logically, what you're saying. It doesn't mean my feelings no 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 understood you won't have more solidified feelings and i acknowledge that until at least the fourth book because okay. the third book is about understanding development yeah. fourth book is more of a solidified okay because logically you're making perfect sense i just my i'm saying feelings on the matter are a little bit less i just remember after dry. finishing the second book i at that point had deciphered between aelin and selena and i said to myself we have been dealing with two separate people. Okay. I, I understand that they are living within the same body, but we are de- dealing with a defense mechanism in whatever way, shape, or form in the form of Selena Sardothian, but we were also dealing with Aelin Ashriver Galathinius, who is the heir apparent to the territory of Terrison, who is in some way, shape, or form a fae who has the strongest claim to a throne. They just... And so any instance in retrospect after finishing Crown of Midnight that I was like, that doesn't seem like something Selena would do. I was thinking to myself, could that have been something that Alien would do? Okay, that's fair. And I feel like that's a... And like, uh, you might not have thought that, but that's definitely what I thought going into the third book. And I think that you should keep that in mind going to the third book because I think it might provide you a bit more perspective going in. That's fair. And I will keep that in mind. But I do think as, as legitimate as that thought process is, I think that sometimes there is just a logical inconsistency. It's, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes I feel like, you know, we read a lot into things to make it make sense. And sometimes I don't want to, like, let Sarah J. <laughs> SJ Moss off the hook when she's just being inconsistent yeah. by saying, like, oh, it's a character choice. Do you get what I mean? Like, I, I feel like on I some instances that. you're 100 percent right. I'm speaking from my perspective. No, on, on some I'm not speaking from pu- future perspective. On but. some instances you're 100 percent correct. I, I I agree with that interpretation. Yeah. Other times I'm a little skeptical, which you are completely entitled you to know, because I'm you're like, a boss ass bitch. Okay, I'm like okay, sure, Aelin. You know, like but other times I think you're right. At this point, 
in the book, though, I approached the rest. Uh, I approached the next book, or I entered the next book thinking, okay, there's Aelin and there's Selena. Okay, that's fine. I, I will think about that when I do the next book. Yeah. I will say something I want to talk about. The love triangle. Is the fucking love triangle. I knew we were going to get to this. Because this is our last it. point, right? This is, yeah, that's pretty much the last point. Because I, I hope I've, like really stated my claim for this book because I really like this book. <laughs> I didn't dislike this book. Here's the thing. I know you didn't dislike you know what's it. Funny? As much as I've roasted it so far and I and I, <laughs> I go through books with a fine tooth comb, which is ironic because my own books have a lot of flaws. But like <laughs> the icy but, staircase. But like I Nigel. The thing shut the fuck up. The thing that ruins, <laughs> I love you too. The thing that ruins this book for me. I love Don't you dare. In some ways, as flawed as it is, I really enjoy the main plot. Mm-hmm. And I think this, you forgot this was of? ruined for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think this was ruined a little bit for me because I had the opposite problem with Akotar. Or a Court of Thorns and Roses. The main The plot- main plot is stupid as fuck and unfollowable and i just hate it but it's like a whiplash it's a roller coaster yeah you can't get bored with it because you never fucking know where it's going yeah you're like i don't get what's happening we'll have a separate episode for akotar yeah but the romance is fantastic in those books Uh, i hate tampon okay you hate tampon but like i got like i i was hoping at least that he was not the end game and i was correct and i was correct (laughs) That's and a pretty I, low bar to And I love. Honestly, though, I'm still proud <laughs> because, like, most people really ship the first person, and SJM has a thing for the second guy, which I said the last time, and I was totally right because K.O. was the second guy. Like, and. So he's the person. Gross. So we'll get to that in a sec. I think SJM, uh, reading Akotar first kind of ruined this romance for me because my bar was so high because I unapologetically love Feyre and Resand. I think they're great. I thought the setup for their relationship was awesome. I loved the chemistry. I think I supported their relationship. If you haven't read Akatar at this point, I'm sorry, but like, oh. I mean, it's your own fault. It's your own damn fault. It's pretty obvious. But, but yeah, anyway. Baron, Reese, and Engel. But I do say people who have read both series find Throne of Glass superior. I've literally never met anyone who shipped her in fucking tampon before. So no, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that Throne of Glass is superior in any way, shape, or form. Plot wise, yes. No, every way. Throne of Glass, yes. not romantically. Yes. I disagree. I don't think the you're Thro- wrong. Throne of Glass romantically is not as good as you're Akitar. wrong. I'm only on the second book, bitch. Mm. Throne of Glass is I'm romance. telling you from what you've been presented, you're wrong. Thro- so far, you're wrong. Throne of Glass is not as good romantically speaking as Akotar was. I don't ship any her with any of these fucking people. And if That's I had your own to damn fault. And I ha- if I had to pick one, mm-hmm. honestly, is and this I part know- of the love triangle conversation? Yes. Okay. Between Kale, Dorian and and um Me. I almost said Feyre. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh Selena of the th- of those three in that love triangle, even though I don't really ship her with anyone, of between Kaol and Dorian, I would pick Dorian personally. Because as much as I agree with you that on some level I think he's a good friend and I think that's okay for you to like have a relationship with someone and then just have it be a friendship. You know, like, oh, we tried it. I think we're better as friends. I'm your friend. I shut up. <laughs> I like inside joke. Sorry. <laughs> I like. I like that. I like that she explores that. However, of the two, I th- and I said this to you and Kush, uh, our friend Kush, like that. Not the weed. <laughs> that Kale and and Selena, in my opinion, are too similar. They don't. They're, they're both strong will. They're, they're both. Not interesting to me no, does that make not. sense like that i feel like a dynamic in a relationship in a s- fictional series has to be interesting and that doesn't mean crazy but i mean like they're like the same and it doesn't mesh and all after everything kl did in the second book i just can't support him without without spoiling anything i'm gonna say in, in retrospect thinking of the first two books i think of i think of a castle at night and bricks and a, like a four poster bed and that's it 
And that may seem like a very like weird thing to say right now, but when I think of that, I don't think of a standout romantic interest, which is I what I think is what you're saying almost that like there's nothing special about Kale. Yes. Nothing special. It about, doesn't spark. I get those vibes of like a woman with a ball gown and a dagger strapped to her thigh. But right. that's all the like interest that I get. Like I don't get fairy tale prince aside from the first book. I don't get anything from the second book. And you know book. what? At first I didn't really ship her and I said this to you in the first the first you book. Did. After the first book. That her and Dorian I think that I would have shipped them if he grew up. He has not grown and up. And he has a little bit. Like even but he has scenes, powers now. He's got trauma. It's not just about his powers. It's just that there's scenes and his brother, with them where they and his cousin, seem like and his friends. Mom. Where they seem like friends. Like they like each other. That they, they enjoy, enjoy each other's company. company. Oh you know? that was gross. I didn't like that. <laughs> Like, I mean, like, Mary Wollstonecraft always said that the most successful marriages are those between friends. And between... Is that your proposal? And between... To me? Shut up. <laughs> between Dorian and Kale, and like I said, please understand, I don't really ship her with either, but if I had to pick one or the other, between those two, it feels like Dorian is... Okay. is the better option personally and i hate saying that because it sounds so stupid like i'm like yeah go for the prince it's not about the fact that he's a prince it's the fact that they have more they, they have chemistry but not in the chemistry and a sexual charge well, they, they have, talk about things they what have, are her and fucking kale they talk have, about i'm saying they have friendly chemistry they, right like they have chemistry as in the fact that they can talk to each other and not be bored shitless or need to resort to sexual interactions to sustain a like exactly like an interaction what interactions have her and kale fucking had that <laughs> are anything but either sexual or like we're training Blah. like or you threw me a birthday party <laughs> like it's so like there's no like her and dorian at least have like legit conversation but that's what i mean when i say I, like when i think of the first two books i get the vibes of like just like like Woman living in castles, silly. Cinderella. It like, feels silly. It feels like a fairy tale, like kind of like TikTok filtered, like yeah. dark filtered, like running through the castle at night kind of vibes. No, nobody's getting me hot. If like, that's nothing's getting me <laughs> you know? hot. Nothing stand outish. Nothing is like so like bold and like daring. It's just like a woman running through the castle at night with a ball gun and a yeah. freaking dagger strapped to well, her. And thigh. to compare, that was the vibe I got with her and Tam, with Feyre and Tamlin in Aquatar. That was was the vibe I got. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That was the same same vibe. I'm so glad we're on the same page. It was literally the same vibe, and that's why I didn't ship it. I was like, this is boring as fuck. It feels like a mood board of a 14-year-old Tumblr girl who only lives inside her room and doesn't know real romance. And Resand being framed in Aquatar initially as the villain made it spicy. It was spicy. You know, and I mean, obviously, spoiler alert. We will talk about this more for special Sunday. Yeah, we'll do a special episode, but like, spoiler alert, obviously, Resand's not the villain in Aquatar. Amazing. But he starts off He's as a villain. So it, it lovable. makes it it makes it more spicy. But Feyre and Tamlin's relationship is boring as bread. Boring as and bread. And that's what not what boring as any bread. Selena. Not boring as wheat. Not boring as rye. As boring sourdough. As it's boring white as white wonder bread. bread. <laughs> yeah. Wonder bread. White wonder bread. Bimbo brand bed. Exactly. Bread. And that's what fucking Selena's relationships feel like with these two dudes. And it's only slightly spicier with the Dorian. Like yeah. he's the only one who's slightly more He's the more only one who gives me the slight like cutting edge vibe that you kind of get when once Resand is introduced under the mountain. Right. That's it's the same vibe. You're like, I like you. The mood board changes. I can't explain why, but I just like you. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we're on the same page. Yeah. I just don't know how to describe it. Yeah. I mean, this I don't know why what's friends. coming, but I just don't I do. like fucking Kale. I don't I don't dig him. And that was what was ruining this book for me. I gotta say. I, I've thought about it long and hard because I had two weeks to sit on this before we recorded this. <laughs> she had but her I things was wondering, ready to say. Why is this book rubbing me the wrong way? And I realized I really like the plot as flawed as it is and i hated the romance and it was ruining it for me i can concede that you know like i was like so put i can off understand that by fucking kale and selena that i, I couldn't that. enjoy this book as much would as i you, wanted to would you say that that is the reason why this book is not superior to the first book i yes then i can completely understand and concede and say that is a completely valid reason 
I honestly think. I do not think any less of you now because before I kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> I think if it was if that if it wasn't for that part of the story, I would have enjoyed it more. Which because every time they had Thank a scene, you for I was feeling like, safe enough to admit that to me now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I was like reading every time I would listen to this book and I was like ah, fucking kale and you know what this is all a part of the reason because I have read Throne of Glass Crown of Midnight and I have not and you know what well I just did she just did but you see I have read Air of Fire the next book and I have not but I will soon she will very soon and hopefully soon she will see that once you side. finish Percy Jackson you lazy you don't fuck bitch <laughs> I fucking hate you. Listen, I work too much. I'm going to read it tomorrow. I'm reading it tomorrow. Okay. okay. You just bought the box set. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> she so was anyway. Like, she was like, I have a copy at the house. I'm like, right, because I'm having a hard time reading on Kindle because it just feels like a book series that I need to read in my hand. She's like, don't worry, I got it. And she's like, wait, I can't find it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? But yeah. like, Hold on. I'll get it. And then she doesn't. And then it. I just bought it. And then she fine. just bought it. And now I can read it. And we'll soon get Percy Jackson up. But I'm very happy that you. I, I'm happy that you enjoyed the second book. I, I enjoy this series. I feel I'm like. I'm glad that I made you read it. I feel <laughs> I like. I sure will. And I, and I I'm glad that I put the headphones on your head and made and press play and made you listen to it. I think my initial sort of hesitance about it was I, I don't usually like to buy Assassin. into the book top, book top, book talk in, hype. In all fairness, this series is not very popular in book talk, but Sarah J. Moss is. It's Akotar. That's very book talky. It's Crescent City. This is better than Akotar, I think. It is. That's, well, at least it's simpler than Akotar. Like Akotar gets goes down rabbit holes. You're like, I I don't know what's fucking going on right now. You're speaking too soon because you're only on the second book out of seven. Mm-hmm. But I will concede. I feel like I'm using that. Concede is such like a a relinquishing term at this point. It's not like I concede. It's like I admit. Like mm-hmm. I I agree. Like yeah Throne i of glass, understand i understand i comprehend sorry throne of glass is such a better series mm-hmm. in the sense that it i is, find it more entertaining it is to an extent simpler mm-hmm. but it is also i feel like it's it's easier to follow simpler is not the right word i think for me you're also speaking from the second book it gets a lot more difficult i understand it's probably gonna get more complicated but i mean like the in conception it see it, it has been thus far easier for me to get what's going on mind you let me just double check when this was published but this was her first series mm-hmm. um but yeah i just think you know that was my opinion sort of on the love triangle obviously you know i haven't gotten as far into the series yet i don't know what's gonna happen but that you know two books in this is just how i feel yeah crown of midnight was published in 2014 um it was actually oh goodness gracious me am i i can't even i don't know she's googling it right now it was september 2nd 2014 and let me see when akatar was published you can keep talking wait i got it i don't really know what to say i'm just thinking uh may 5th 2015 so this was her first series and she has now since published (sighs) the first book throne of glass and the second book crown of midnight Mm -hmm. this is I don't want to make presumptions, but for an author, first time being published, this is her first published book, first published series. It's going to be... It feels like it. And not in a bad way. I don't it, mean that condescendingly. It means it in the most amazing way because there's an... I feel like when... Correct me if you see a different pattern, but I feel like once um, authors become known for a published series... It gets a lot more difficult to follow their train of thoughts because yeah. they get more comfortable with making leaps and bounds that normally they wouldn't be able to have a following right. to follow. Well, they get used to not over explaining. And, you know, because on I, some level as a writer, like from a writing perspective, that seems like a good thing. But it's not. But as a reader, 
I want you to tell me more than once what the fuck is going on. Like, I loved Akatar. I read Akatar. I was introduced to SJM through Akatar, and subsequently I found Throne of Glass and Crescent City. Crescent City is still my favorite series from SJM. It's an ongoing series. It's lovely. I highly recommend you read it. But it is incredibly difficult to follow. Mm -hmm. I've read the first book twice, and I'm still like finding out things for the first time now and it's been released for over two years and the most recent book came out in February I read it in Mm -hmm. four days I've needed to revisit it but it's like I feel like there's a consensus as with once your series becomes very popular as in in this case Agotar you need to elaborate less because Crescent City like I said is very convoluted very hard to follow but on the other end throne of glass is like a, a f- breath of fresh air when it comes to the, to the fantasy romance genre because you don't need to work as hard to understand what's happening it's a mm-hmm. lot more there's a lot more segues there's a lot more natural progression everything comes a bit more slowly especially if you read it instead of like take it in the audiobook format but i feel like it's a lot easier to digest especially prior to Akatar th- blowing up. It's yeah, Akatar in my opinion if you're new to SJM is not the first book you it's, should read by it, her. It, you need to read Throne of Glass you first. You really should read Throne of Glass first and I'm finding now. But anyway, so those are kind of like my my initial thoughts. Do you want to hear my predictions for the next book? I would love to hear it before forget- we finish. It's the prediction. Time time. Yeah, okay. Time. So here's my predictions and you guys can uh, you know, you and I'm sure Ronnie will will laugh at me how about how wrong or right I am. So these are my predictions. Ready? So I think that what's going to happen is that Selena is going to go to this other kingdom. Wendelin. Wendelin. Out east. Yes. And I think that she's going to find, or at least I'm hoping, she finds a new love interest who is not Kale. And I don't think she's going to end up with Dorian because that feels like SJM doesn't want her to end up with Dorian. And you're giving me a look. <laughs> you can't uh, ask me. Uh, should I guard my face right now? Or it's not? okay. Um, so she's good at dead pants. She'll just look at me that way. So- <laughs> I, I I don't want to make any faces, but we'll see. She's either going to have a new love interest or, or not. And I'm going to be upset. And then <laughs> there's going to be a lot of new characters. She has to find a new friend. She's either, so SJM is going to either use Dorian to replace, stop, <laughs> to replace I'm Nehemia. I'm faces at her, I'm She's sorry. She's going to use Dorian to replace Nehemia as like the friend she can get close to, she, or she's going to find a new one. Are you saying she's going to friend zone him? Yeah. She's either going to friend zone him or not. And I feel like you're saying the skies are the blue or it's not. No, I mean, there's only two options for me. That's my theory. I don't That's think she's going to end up with... theory of anyone. There's either but I'm a saying pro she, I don't think con. she's going to end up with Dorian is my point. So oh. like, what she's going to do with Dorian is either friend zone him or like fuck off and go do her own thing with these So she's either going to have people. him in his life as a friend or she's or not going to have him, him in his life. Okay. I thought you meant she's either going to date him or not. I'm no. Like, that's a pretty It doesn't feel ended. like to me she's going to end up with Dorian as much as I would like her to because I hate Kale. <laughs> or now. because this is Cinderella, Just the way you're looking going. at me, she might. But I don't know. I don't I'm think she will. I'm not looking at her. Mm. Yes, I, I am. I think Kale is going to inadvertently become a villain. Like, he's going to work against Selena's interests. I'm too drunk to actually face her when I do this. Okay, keep talking. He's going to work against Selena's interest and inadvertently serve as an antagonist. What? Yes. <laughs> That's what I think. I don't do you think- really think he's going to completely ass- assassinate his character? I don't think it's, it's going to be a character assassination. I think he thinks he'll be doing the right thing. I feel like he's in a position where he understands the right and the wrong thing, but he doesn't know which he should follow. So you're saying he should completely like not follow the part of himself that acknowledges the right thing? No. I think that in his head, 
he'll pull a K all bullshit that he usually okay. does. Okay, okay. And think that he's doing the right thing without having all the facts. I'm saying in the heart, in his heart of hearts, he knows what the right and wrong is, but he's going to put weight to whatever he's going to actually do. Yeah. Okay. We're so, on the same page. I think that inadvertently he'll end up working against Selena's interest. Okay. Do you get what I mean by that? Uh, sure. I don't yeah. think he's going to actively no, no. try and harm her, but I think something he does is going to end up you. hurting her. I hear you, but I don't know if I like what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, these are my drunk predictions. Oh, we are schmackered at this point. Schmackered. So, yeah. At this point, we've had um, too much. Yeah, that's all I have so far. Anything else? Really? Nothing? I think at some point. What I don't do you, think it's going to be think, in the next book. Do you have any prediction of what's going to happen with, like, Aelin versus Selena? I think that in the end... I mean, I don't think in the next book, but I think at some point in the end, the resolution of that will be, like, she's both. She's, she's both embracing a- these two sides of herself. But I think that somehow... Do whether you think she's going to come up with another personality like Lillian? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. But I think that she will at some point, whether she fully embraces this identity or not, will use Aelin Galathinius as leverage at some point. Like whether people back that title or like she needs to bring it up to further the plot. I don't know. So which personality do you think she's going to embrace then? Or do you think she's going to create an entirely new one? I think that on some level she's melding the two and creating a new one. I don't think she's going to pick one or the other. Okay. I think that Selena Sardothian has a lot of trauma attached to her, but there's aspects of Selena that Selena, I'm going to call her for now. For now, because that's what she, you know, her she as. goes by. But I think there's aspects of Selena that Selena doesn't want to let go of and never can because it's become part of her understandable but i do especially think, the salt mine but i do think she's gonna release the trauma of selena sardothian how do you think that her understanding of her resolution with nahemia is gonna go because like i nahemia that, called her alentia well what i would like i don't know i'm this isn't a prediction like this is going to happen it's more what i would like to see happen character wise okay i would like to see her have some closure regarding nahemia that she finds a relationship, and that doesn't necessarily mean romantic, guys. Like, she finds a relationship that fills that void she was trying to use Nehemia to fill. And recognizes that her relationship with Nehemia was what it was, but it wasn't what she needed it to be. This may seem like a very directed question, but how do you feel she's going to take that last conversation? The last conversation with Nehemia? Which was get out. And like the last conversation with her alive, which was you're a coward. I think that she's she's gonna take it to heart. I think based on how she mourned Nehemia, she's taking it seriously. How is she taking it though? Is which personality? I think that is she taking it's it as... an ego hit to Selena and it's an emotional hit to Aelin. Does that make sense? I feel like that makes sense. I feel like you're articulating it very well and how I interpret it. Like, it's like Selena's ego has been damaged by that, that how dare you call me a coward, and Aelin is hearing, I've betrayed you as a friend. Like, it's, it's, she's, she's hurt in two directions. I can understand that. You know, and I think that what she needs to find is that, personally, from what I've seen, is that her relationship to Nehemia never was what she wanted it to be. It was never And she can't interpret what Nehemia said from either personality. Mm -hmm. She can't take to heart either of those interpretations, personally. Because... She didn't know enough. She didn't know her enough. Right. Uh, What do you think is going to happen with Kale and Dorian? I think... Because she's going off to Wendell, and we know that, but do you think... There's going to be a problem. There has to be a conflict between the two of them uh, for story reasons. You know, it's interesting. You think that they're going to get in a bro fight? I think there's going to be a conflict of some kind. How severe, I can't t- tell you because I never know where sh- SJM goes with these kinds of things. Okay. But there's going to be a conflict. And I think that they're both going to take different 
sides or or have a different perspective on who Selena truly is. Okay. I think that Kaol, why I think Kaol's not the right person for her in the long run, is I think if that comes to a head and they disagree about who Selena is, truly, like their ber- personal perspective of her. Kaol fell in Kale love with Selena. Kaol fell in love with Selena. Dorian fell in love with Aelin. I feel like I agreed with that point. You know, I feel like they fell in love with different people. They love different people. And I feel like the fact that Selena, Aelin, whoever you want to call her, only told Kale upon departure everything really mm-hmm. speaks numbers. Oh, yeah. And she left him her shit. That was, I didn't mention that. But she's and Fleetfoot. Yeah. And, Fleet and Fleetfoot. Foot. Love Fleetfoot. The dog. The dog. We love the dog. Aristocats. But those are here. all the questions that I had for you. Do you have any questions for me? No, because I don't want you to spoil anything. Do you have any questions for me about, like, clarifying... I hope I didn't sound stupid as fuck. Anyway, go ahead. Do you have any questions for me about clarifying plot points? Um, I think I'm okay. Because we established the thing about Nehemia. Nehemia died yeah, because I remem- they had a difference of right. opinion. I forgot about that, that Archer admitted, like, that he was responsible. So that was a momentary lapse And in you my understand memory. who's still part of the King's Circle, correct? Yes, I did. His old, like... Um, his whole posse Mm -hmm. is still very much a part. And at this point in the end of the second book, we understand two things. We understand that Selena Sardothian, who is the assassin who was contracted by the king of Otterlin, is actually the only threat to Otterlin in that she is Aelin Asher Vergalathinius, and she is going to the only place that could potentially help her. And gain fucking leverage. Kale is responsible. And the other thing we know... Thanks, Kale. And the other thing we know is that the King of Otterlin has something that he should not have. The key. One of the three word keys. Right. And so they're departing Ooh. on this very weird note of mis and distrust but i'm excited for the next book because it seems like selena is going to be in a new environment she's going to be she in a is. New country i was very excited for which this. is exciting because i was sick and tired of her being the, in this one fucking the castle. castle all day long i didn't i in, in all due honesty i did not like it at first but in retrospect after reading the next book i did like it's it a breath of fresh air I'm it was very excited but i didn't I really acknowledge it i know it's exhausting it. learning about new characters but like I'm optimistic. Well, I, um, yep, I think this is time for a sign off, right? Yeah, I think so. So that was, um, our podcast. Sorry, that was so long and rambly. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really yeah. hope you enjoyed our drunken selves. Um, again, I'm Rory. <laughs> and I'm Ronnie. And this has been Have and Have Not, where I have, um, Sarah J. Moss's Throne of Glass. <laughs> <laughs> the crab and I, or you have read it. I said have read. You did not say have read. I have. Like, in fact, you said I have. <laughs> I have read Sarah J. Mass's Throne of Glass, Crown, Crown of, of Midnight. Midnight, and I have not until now. Until now. And next, we're going to continue with the next book, which is Air of Fire. Which and is- keep an eye out for Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the lightning thief, have yeah. and have not. Yes, if you keep an eye out. And also keep an eye out for Sinful Quinful Sunday. And yep. also keep an eye out for www.stopthecolorellow.com. That's color without a U. It's C-O-L-O-R. We are not British. No, as much as we may want to be. Unfortunately. I would have loved to have a sexy British accent to tell you that, but I do not. That was so bad. So we're going to go, and we really hope you enjoy everything, and we hope to see you in a future podcast. Bye. Bye.